during that period of silence. The only background noise you could hear was the sound of the rain thudding against the roof above us here. It has returned. We had about five minutes of respite from the driving rain, and now it's absolutely tipping down again, Willow. Yes, here it comes again, and another little sprinkling, make the game even quicker. So Cherries will get us underway. They're going from left to right here at the Vitality Stadium. Our referee this afternoon and his officials are in Illuminous Yellow. David Coote is the man in the middle. Andy Madley on VAR duty. Let's hope we're not mentioning him too much over the course of the uh, next couple of hours. You're live with BBC Radio Solent across the South and across the UK as well via BBC Sounds this afternoon. If you do listen on Solent normally and you've got a dodgy reception, you can get us online today uh, as a result of this game not falling into our contractual rights problems. Chelsea are in their spearmint change colours and the Cherries immediately going with a long diagonal out to the far side and win their first throw in over the halfway line on the left, which Milos Kerkes will take. Down the line it goes already, looking for the early run of Solanke up against his former club, the club whom he came through the ranks out, of course, before moving on to Liverpool and then here to the Cherries as Watara gets involved. It is Watara on the left and Tavernier on the right, by the way, as Watara looks to link up with Kirkes, but he's denied over on that far right-hand side by Conor Gallagher, who eventually cannons it out of play off a Cherries man out for a throw. I don't think I've ever come across a, a Chelsea team at this stage of the season where there's so many unknowns and people on the bench that haven't even played. Well, their injury list is remarkable. I will try and get the full list out very shortly, but we'll just wait, break off here because Conor Gallagher is assuming the role almost as a, a senior midfielder today in this Chelsea team as it goes back to Robert Sanchez, the signing from Brighton. Spanish international who's all in yellow away to our right. It's certainly a day that goalkeepers don't want to be taking too many risks, Willow. Just looking at the ball, it, it's a slight slowness in it with the water. Like it goes to Sanchez, Chelsea playing it around inside their own penalty area here, and Bournemouth trying to trigger that press with Tavernier and Christie closing them down. But Chelsea with a tall figure of Leslie Ugochukwu, the Frenchman, running into a bit of trouble, but it runs loose for Enzo Fernandez, the Argentinian World Cup winner. Now over the far side, down the right comes Gusto, another of their young French talents, the French under-21 international. Has it in field, just over the halfway line. Back it goes again to Ugochukwu. Chelsea taking a little bit of a chance there, but Ooh. Gusto slips, and that's exactly what's going to be happening, and now Bournemouth have got possession. Watara steaming on over the halfway line. Unfortunately, he then lost the ball under his feet. Another Chelsea player slipped up off the ball, and now Sterling's away. Down the right-hand side, he's got options outside him. Raheem Sterling coming across the top of the box. Enzo Fernandez to shoot. It's on target, along the ground, but it's straight at Neto. They've got a chance to break here, Christie. No. Another slip, another poor ball, and here comes Chelsea again with a good shoot crew. Looks like they're all on roller skates. Tall, rangy figure in the centre of the Chelsea midfield. Mudrick running into a determined challenge from Max Ahrens just outside the right corner of the penalty area. Then some nice footwork by Tavernier away from Mudrick up towards halfway. Tavernier trying to nick it away from Levi Colwell. But Chelsea have it back again in the central third of the field. And here is Mudrick running up against his teammate from Ukraine, Zabani, who just stepped across there and ushered Nicholas Jackson away but it's back to Mudrick, sneaking through inside, left up against Lloyd Kelly, flashed across goal, and over the bar, I think, from close range in the end, Gallagher was right in there. Who's it come off last? Corner. It is a corner. Well, it was all a bit too easy, Willow, down the inside left channel. Well, it was, it's all about mistakes at the moment, people slipping over, giving the ball away, slipping into tackles, range coming down heavy. Well, it is a corner. I didn't see a conclusive uh, de deflection there off a, uh, a Cherries player. Conor Gallagher coming in at the near post. It's not a corner, is it? That's just come straight off Gallagher. I thought it did too. Yeah, that's what my first initial reaction was. So that's a harsh corner, but it's taken short. Over on the right-hand side, comes to the top of the box. Here's Conor Gallagher again. Dinks one back in inside right. That one's met by the Cherries and brought away by Solanke up towards the halfway line. And he's brought to the ground. And that's going to be a yellow card and a very early one for Raheem Sterling. The siding down Dom Solanke as the Cherries tried to get a break on. Just three minutes in, Sterling booked. Yeah, great work by Dominic there. Just made 25 yards, running with the ball out. <coughs> excuse me, out, out, out of the box. Sterling knew he was all going all the way. I have to say, I haven't got it in front of me, but Sterling and Solanke would have been at Liverpool together at the same time, Willow. Yeah, probably. Without uh, someone will pull me up if I'm wrong, but uh, I think so. I think they probably would have been. Anyway, Sterling's probably not one of those players who's going to be too concerned as the Cherries get a free kick about being on a yellow card for 87 minutes. If that's your centre-back in slippery conditions, you might be worried, but Sterling probably not so much. No. No, not at all. 
Cherry's got a free kick, just short of the halfway line. Nil nil, lively start, four minutes gone. But as you say, Willow, mistakes and slips and all over the place. You're going to see plenty today. That's going to be offside against Watara. Oh. I think the ball, uh, the flag stays down for the moment. Well, in fact, eventually the, uh, the referee blew for offside before the flag had actually gone up through their communication system that they have. Yeah, it's a great touch, wasn't it? If he could have uh, just kept himself on side. As I said, two more games still to come this weekend. Everton play Arsenal at 4.30, which I wouldn't think John Williams will be rushing home for at all. And then tomorrow night, the TV companies pick Nottingham Forest against Burnley, which I uh, can only imagine that uh, there wasn't anything else available. It's the ball's over to the far side. Uh, Sterling and Solanke weren't at Liverpool together at the same time, says uh, Jordan. I'm probably about four years out, to be honest. But anyway, here's Gallagher. I was two years out. There you go. What's two years between friends? Nil-nil, Bournemouth, Chelsea, BBC Radio, Solent. Cherries have it over on the left-back side of the field with Kirkes up towards halfway, then Billings lost it under his feet, and then it's won by Lewis Cook. But in a manner that referee David Coote didn't like as he left Enzo Fernandez on the turf, who's holding his face. Phil yeah, Billing checks on his well-being. Yeah, sometimes that happens. I've had plenty of them right in the movie. It's flailing arm. Both, well, it's, it is a flailing arm, both, but both are at it, and you... And you yeah. Okay. And particularly Lewis Cook there as he turned on the slippery turf. He was trying to stabilise himself as then Solanke clips Sterling, but no free kick. And here come the Cherries charging away up towards the halfway line. It's Kirk is across the field, out towards this near side, and Tavernier who holds it up and just restarts things and goes back to Ilya Zabani on the right of this Cherries back four. Tavernier's ball through the middle. It was a difficult one for Disassi to deal with. It awkwardly bounced up, sort of somewhere near his thigh and his hand, but the referee was happy. Advantage played as Sterling goes over the halfway line away from Billing. Not it to the right-hand side, over on that far touch line for Jackson, who's just uh, ushered away from the penalty area there by Lloyd Kelly, one of the three changes for Bournemouth this afternoon, with Kelly, Tavernier and Watara all starting, Senesi, Semenyo and Clivert benched. Cherry's break down that attack, it was Watara back inside his own half who pinched it away, now up towards Solanke, out towards this near right side, short of halfway and Aarons. Bournemouth keeping possession nicely. Open start, Willow. It is, and the, the ball's fizzing round, but I just think... We got had another bit of rain, just a little bit of drag on the passes. The ball just, you know, when it sprays up off the ball, we're all rolling. The intensity of the rain has just subsided for a moment. It's now light drizzle rather than bucketing down as Aaron's uh, turns inside Mudrick, slipped and lost his footing. And there's some room in the centre circle here for Conor Gallagher as Chelsea in their spearmints change colours. Move Pe from right to left. I think. You're going peppermint, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Peppermint's a little bit greener, isn't it, than spearmint? Anyway, doesn't matter. You get the impression at home. Somewhere between peppermint and spearmint. As the ball is left of the centre circle with Thiago Silva, the 38-year-old. 39 next week. It's the ball over the far right-hand side. Gusto, down the inside right channel, looking for Gallagher. Pursued by Lewis Cook. Gallagher can't control it. Lewis Cook mops up behind him. And he uh, makes his way out towards the far touch line. And it's back to Lloyd Kelly, left of the centre circle. That's nil it. nil Excellent work by Cook, <laughs> tracking Gallagher back, takes control of it as well, great to see. Seven minutes gone on BBC Radio Solent across the UK today as well on BBC Sounds. We've had a staggered three-day three weekend, Jordan Clark's been earning overtime with all of his programmes over the course of the last three days with Southampton taking another pasting on Friday night. Portsmouth, late drama at Derby yesterday and of course great FA Cup coverage yesterday involving Yeovil, Stoneham and also Wimborne. And, of course, today the Cherries back in action. Saints on Tuesday night as well. Home to Ipswich. Cherries down the left-hand side, looking to put Watara away. Up against Disassi, comes to the top of the box. Controlled by Colwell, who was calm there with two red and black shirts closing in on him on his own penalty he area. Fantastic Colwell there for Chelsea. He had three around them and he managed to wriggle himself out of it. Colwell is uh, one who's making good forward strides. Levi Colwell is just under a bit of pressure here on the uh, left-back position again as it's cleared away down this left side. Tavernier got a foot on it. Lewis Cook tangling with Enzo Fernandez. Chelsea come up towards the halfway line. Jackson can't hold it up. And then Christie down the right side, thinking that Tavernier had made the run, but actually he hadn't. And now Colwell has got a bit of time left of his own box. But then Lewis Cook sliding in again That's to pinch it away from Fernandez. Yeah, he's on it. Cookie today, he's all over the place. Giovanni there, he's going to have a good ride with this, Jackson. I've seen him a couple of times on telly. I wonder if Lewis Cook, knowing that Tyler Adams is waiting in the wings, Willow, he's working his way back to fitness. He probably yeah. will take Lewis Cook's shirt when he's fit. It, it goes through your mind, I'm going to show you. Not the first time Lewis Cook has uh, felt that, probably as well, I would imagine, with central midfield competition. Bournemouth trying to win it back inside the Chelsea half at the minute. The game's been played at a 
Pretty fierce tempo, Bournemouth have won a free kick here, just over the edge of the centre circle in the Chelsea half for a foul on Billy. Yeah. I think it's all to do with the pitch, how quick it is, it's fizzing round, both teams. As it dries out, it'll get quicker. And Chelsea have uh, already played Luton, winning by three goals to nil, lost 3-1 at West Ham, drew 1-1 with Liverpool, and last time out, lost 1-0 at home to Nottingham Forest. Putting the ball in the back of the net's been a problem for them. Here we've played nearly ten minutes, and it's nil-nil. It's, got, it's got to go wide. It does go wide, along the ground, from Lewis Cook to find Ryan Christie, who's going to try and tease one towards the back post, where Zabani was in there. Just got a cute little nudge there, Zabani, from Ugochukwu, and it goes behind for a goal kick to Chelsea. Yeah, quite, I thought... You're saying he got a nudge? I didn't... I thought he just misjudged it a little bit. Yeah, it's one of those cute little easing nudge, you know, where he's trying... Yeah, yeah. You nudge him without making it like you've nudged him. Just enough. As the ball's driven long along the turf. It's going to run again for Conor Gallagher, who is one who's finding quite a bit of space in the Chelsea midfield in these opening ten minutes. Very open game. Chelsea looking... It's probably a relief for Chelsea, I imagine, having played a couple of uh, teams playing in low blocks to have a bit more space to run into rather than having to play in front of people all the time and try and find your way through. Here come Chelsea now, right corner of the penalty area. Conor Gallagher again coming across the top of the box, nicks it in, here's Raheem Sterling in the inside right channel, drags it across the six-yard line, no one coming in in a Chelsea shirt. Bournemouth were a little bit fortunate there because Sterling, who's been the scourge of them on many occasions, got in very easily, pulled it back into a great area where your number nine would have had a tap in if he was there. Yeah, you could put it down as a half chance, I think. I think he's aiming for the far post. Maybe a cross. Oh, he's put it into a great area, isn't he? If you're a number nine, well, let's run right along the six-yard line. Oh, it's there for a tap-in, yeah. Yeah, no one was there. Nicholas Jackson had uh, pulled off making a deeper run. No one's made more off-the-ball runs than Nicholas Jackson in the uh, the Premier League this season, but he's still waiting for his second uh, second goal. He's got uh, one goal from an expected goals of 3.07 so far, which is the, the biggest differential in the Premier League in terms of taking clear-cut chances. Thiago Silva just standing with the ball on the edge of the Chelsea box at the moment as it goes back to Robert Sanchez defending the goal away to our right Chelsea 3-1 winners here under Frank Lampard when he was going through a bit of a turbulent spell last season the Chelsea team that won that over Bournemouth away was uh, Graham Potter in charge and now it's uh, Sterling driving forward to the edge of the penalty again. Billings there, Watara got a crucial foot and it breaks off a Cherry's man actually into their own penalty area. Runs loose 25 yards out to Gallagher. Out to the right-hand side and Gusto, who holds it up just outside the box, faced up by Kirkes. Gusto goes back to Gallagher and Cherry's got their shape well there and they're forced back to halfway and now it's Thiago Silva again for Chelsea. Forward it comes to Mudrick in his bright pink boots in towards Jackson who tried to roll Zabani but the Cherries man was strong there and now Watara sees a bit of space to run into gets away from one challenge Tavernier had made the run but the ball from Watara through the middle was telegraphed to Thiago <laughs> what a piece of skill to get, a, get away from the, the defender there fantastic stuff Chelsea quickly coming again we've played 12 minutes Bournemouth nil Chelsea nil on BBC Radio Solent just one half-hearted attempt really from Enzo Fernandez straight to Neto in terms of shots on goal so far, but Chelsea with an enterprising break a moment ago. As we see Maurizio Pochettino out on the edge of the technical area in a uh, knee-length, nearly, or thigh-length black Chelsea puffer jacket. No coat for Andoni Irola, still in his sort of smart gear, but doesn't need an overcoat, despite the fact it's been hammering with rain all day. Mudrick just over the halfway line, drives it into the feet of Nicholas Jackson, playing a little one-two. Jackson just outside the penalty, shoots for goal this time and drags it with his left foot wide of the post. Neto was no, hit scrambling the post. across, it hit the post, did it? I think he did. Wow, from this angle again, it was hard to see that, but Neto underway was scrambling. We'll have another look at that, but that's a let-off. And Enzo Fernandez is uh, just down here, in fact, replacing his boot. Let's have a look. Yeah, it did sight the outside of the post below. You're absolutely right. Scuffed effort from Jackson which actually might have helped take it away from Neto because he didn't actually yeah. catch it cleanly. But... No, he didn't, did us a favour. <coughs> so Nicholas Jackson hits the post. Remember, failed a medical with the Cherries back in January as Kelly lost the ball down the left-hand side, looking for Solanke, who's in a race with Disassi here. Disassi, the French international, gets there. Solanke keeps it in over by the corner flag, left-hand side, then tried to cannon it off Gusto, but the Frenchman was clever and then throws, knew, his, you know, throws himself to the ground I, by you, the corner flag. I just, you just know they're going to go down, don't you? We've become that used to it now. Anybody standing behind anyone and they've got the ball at the feet, hit the deck. The Chelsea reject song is a little unkind to Dominic Solanke. 
As he conceded the foul right in front of them. I say foul, it was one of those, wasn't it? Which regular listeners will know we go on about. Defenders in trouble, just lying down on the ground, getting a free kick. Here comes Ugo Chukwu up over the halfway line for Chelsea. But again, the, the ball in the final third lacked quality and Bournemouth easily able to cut out that attack. And it's out towards Max Ahrens on this near right-hand side for the Cherries. Tavernier and Ahrens link up. That's a new partnership the Cherries will be trying to get something out of on this right-hand side. Out of play for a throw into Bournemouth, just short of halfway. Yeah. Always like to see fullback and winger combining to get us up the pitch. The Cherries uh, have beaten Chelsea four times in the Premier League, of course. They're one, the one big club that they have had some success against. Three of those have been at Stamford Bridge. Only one of them here, a memorable 4-0 win. Midweek game as the ball goes back to Neto, who is all in pink again today. As he clears it right-footed out towards the far side. Gusto beats Watara in the air. The ball's on the halfway line with Raheem Sterling over on that far right-hand side. Philip Billing was very quickly onto Sterling. And Sterling's very strong, isn't he? Low centre of gravity, just planted his feet and Phil, Phil Bill couldn't get the ball. Quarter of an hour played, goalless at the Vitality Stadium. The rain has, I think, now nearly completely stopped. One or two drops, if anything. Absolutely horrendous drive down across the New Forest earlier, Willow. Yeah. Pools of water and driving spray and everything. Yeah, loads of water. Yeah. The car park was turning into a little bit of a river when I arrived at about, about quarter past 11. As the ball is with Thiago Silva at the moment, just standing with his foot on it inside the Chelsea half. Then they make a little triangle up towards Mudrick, just over halfway, hops away from Max Ahrens with ease. Now Mudrick heading towards the penalty area for Chelsea here, and an important foot came in, Zabani and Watara between them close the door, and it spins behind for a Chelsea corner on the left-hand side. Yeah, looked a bit dangerous there, Chelsea, running arrows, head on, somebody's got to take responsibility and come and meet him with a challenge. It was Watara who got the crucial touch. We see him do that a lot, haven't we? His defensive work under previous regimes. It's the first time we've seen Watara tasked with the responsibilities from Andoni here at Ola. Short corner from Chelsea, low ball in from Mudrick, strikes Ryan Christie, spins up, and Neto was just for a second panicking. That might spin and loop under the bar, but in the end it lands on the roof of the net for another Chelsea corner. Yeah, but to be safe than sorry there, Neto. We know Cherry's set pieces haven't been particularly good at either end, to be honest. They're one of the worst attacking set piece units in the Premier League this season. We know the defensive problems. This one's come short again from Chelsea. Gallagher back out to Enzo Fernandez, just outside the left edge of the penalty area. Now Mudrick heading towards the byline, low cross into the centre of the penalty area, which is hammered clear by Max Ahrens. Nearly goes out of the ground, strikes the roof and comes back down. And there'll be a throw into. Chelsea once again, just about seven or eight yards from the corner flag on this near left-hand side. Mudrick, one of their two changes today. Mudrick and Ugachuk win for the injured Caicedo and Chilwell, who was benched. Solanke was very alert to the throw in there, much more alert than Ugachukwu. Solanke nipped in and pinched it away, and then it's done brilliantly to hold it up and wait for support. And then Billing, unfortunately, has lost it, but actually it's come off a Chelsea foot in the end. Yeah. Levi Colwell couldn't have let that go out. Yeah, he's running away with the ball. Yeah. No uh, cards on this occasion. I was at a game yesterday, Willow in League Two, where someone got a silly yellow card for kicking the ball away. It was their first defence, and then later on, of course, got a second yellow and got sent off. Can't so, do it. Uh, there were more. We've all do it, but you can't do it. Lewis Cook, and again, the referee's clamping down early on in this season. Um, it's not obviously having an effect with everybody. There were 44 yellow cards, I think, yesterday, Willow in the Premier League. It's the most yellow cards ever on a Premier League match day. Wow. Cherry's got a free kick here, taken quickly inside right channel. Laurent Ryan Christie oh! spins it across. Here comes Watara. Brilliant save by Sanchez, who came sliding out in his six yard box when it seemed like Watara was certain to score. Billings ball back in. It's going to run to the top of the box. Tavernier there ahead of Jackson, who was back defending. Still Tavernier, edge of the area. He shoots for goal. That's wobbled in the air and hits Sanchez on the chest and bounces down. But a great bit of goalkeeping there from the former Brighton man to deny Watara a first goal of the season. Yeah, it was Watara. He'd done fantastic. He just beats everybody across the face. But the keeper was absolutely magnificent. And just came, the old star, star jump, wasn't it? Yeah, it came from a quick bit of thinking from the free kick as well. Down this right-hand side, they saw a chance. Chelsea had switched off. And as it worked its way across the penalty area, Watara much more alert than the Chelsea defenders. But as you say, Willow, Sanchez just came sliding out, arms up in the air as wide as they possibly could be, and uh, managed to shut down the angle and block the ball away. But enterprising stuff from the set piece. And the Cherry's most notable chance so far in his first 18 minutes. Goalless it remains. 
Russo Pochettino was actually in charge of that Spurs team. Willow, you might remember, came up against Mark Travers having the game of his life on debut. Yes, I do. With nine men. The best goalkeeping yeah. debut yeah. ever in the history of football. Nathan Ake's late winner. <laughs> Spurs ended with nine men. Pochettino was in charge of that Spurs team that day. Here he is in the dugout managing Chelsea, and they're on the defensive as Tavernier's played in by Christie. Right-hand side, and Tavernier just scuffed his ball with his wow. right foot and dis um, dispossessed by Chelsea. Oh, so unfortunate. Dominic had gone to the far post. It was the ball from Christie which had put Tavernier away. Kirk is penalised for a foul on Sterling on the halfway line. Bit of over-enthusiasm there from the Chelsea's Hungarian international who actually played against the country of his birth and is, is growing up of this international break willow played away to serbia where uh, he's from a town in serbia he's playing for hungary against serbia in serbia which he said yeah, was a, a strange mom and, one mum and dad different countries yeah he said it was a strange one but it was a nice experience and hungary won two ones so that'll have made it a nicer experience as well it was a qualifier the ball is back with Chelsea inside the Ooh. half at the minute and just a little bit of a chance taken there by the 19-year-old <laughs> Frenchman Ugachukwu as he turned into Ryan Christie. That was risky. <laughs> Ryan Christie nearly nicked it off him. Bournemouth again triggering the the, uh, the press there as the ball came out to this left-hand side and Colwell. Little one-two play, Colwell's lost it though, it's hard work from Tavernier on the halfway line that's won it back for the Cherries. Going from left to right here, then the challenge came in, it was an awkward looking challenge from Colwell and the referee says that even though he took the ball he also swept through and took the legs of Tavernier first. And done us a favour there, the referee, I think. Well, Bournemouth were in a bit of trouble if they, uh, I think, hadn't uh, had the whistle there. It's definitely a foul, isn't it? He's taken Tavernier first and then the ball. Cole will, despite his protests. So just over the halfway line outside the centre circle, centre field, Bournemouth have a free kick again. The, the, the look, I'm looking at this, it's uh, the set play, central. It's got to go wide, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they've got something set up. Well, this is what they work on over the course of... International breaks, particularly they've only got nine or ten and they can't do too much. So nine or ten, I think, was what Andoni Irola said they had available with international call-ups uh, sending people off to different parts of the globe. They've taken it short. Now Lewis Cook gets it back, clips it to the far side where Watara wins the first header. That's going to be a goal kick, in fact, despite Cherries claiming it had come off a Chelsea man. The last touch off a red shirt and behind for a yeah. Chelsea goal kick. Our fans behind the goal didn't seem too interested in it being a corner. They, they could see for themselves. I wonder how much, uh, in terms of, we talked about the kelly Senesi decision earlier on, Willow, as to who you, who you drop. I wonder whether Senesi's global travels might have had a, uh, an impact in that as well. Called up for Argentina, recalled to Argentina. Well, it's not ideal, is it? You know, halfway around the world. Sinister, of course, went to South America as well, as did Caicedo for Chelsea, who's come back with a knee injury, not available today. Nil-nil, 21 gone, BBC Radio Solent and BBC Sounds. Wide right, Chelsea attacking the box with Sterling. Up against Kirkes again, oh, he glides past Kirkes, Sterling towards the byline, well blocked by Lloyd Kelly at the near post for the Cherries. That was concerning how easily Sterling left Kirkes behind. Here they come again with Gusto, pulls it back towards the six-yard box. Sterling there, handball shouts, play continues. Referee's pointing to his chest. Uh, this one is still going on, the ball is bouncing on the edge of the penalty area and I think the referee might have realised he'd missed one there because he then gives the Cherries a very soft free kick on the edge of the box. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. What a cut back. Oh, he's handled it, hasn't he? That's well, how he's got the ball forward. Well, it was a great block by Lloyd Kelly, actually, in there. It has, I think it's hit him on the above the shirt line, so that probably wouldn't have counted as a handball, actually. And Lloyd Kelly, therefore, has got a very important block in. Here comes Tavernier, trying to take on Cole around the outside, but didn't have the pace, so checks back and brings in Aarons on this near right-hand side as we hit the halfway point in the first half. Uh, thankfully now a, uh, an almost dry Vitality Stadium. Lovely afternoon for football, mild, the wind's dropped, the rain stopped. Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. Solanke just outside the penalty area, holds it up looking for Christie, who gets away from Gusto, left side of the box, scuffs it in towards Solanke, and then a very heavy set for Watara, but it's going to be picked up by Kirkes. Cherries fans usher him to shoot, still the Cherries have it, Christie lofts one deep, Tavernier coming in, just glances off the top of his head as he was jumping, Aarons then slides in with Mudrick, and all he was going to do there, Aarons, was earn a bit of applause to the crowd and concede a goal kick to Chelsea. Yeah, nice bit of pressure. Just a little over here to the far post. I think he got a flick on it, actually. Yeah, it just glided off the top of Tavernier's head, who won't to be famous for scoring too many headers, I wouldn't have thought. It was a shame Solanke's... Uh, he could have turned there. Yeah, and as he's tried to set it back for Watara on the edge of the box, he just completely overcooked it, didn't he? It was oh, way too he, firm. He, some of his trickery, he could have got it got that out of his pocket. Mudrick there, they tried that, they saw an isolated uh, fullback there, Chelsea, Robert Sanchez drove the ball to Mudrick, who claimed he was held up by Aarons, but the referee says that physical tussle was fine, 
good defending from the former Norwich man. Now Christie in a bit of space, halfway inside the Chelsea half for the Cherries here. Christian to the feet of Solanke, back to goal, spins oh. it round the left-hand side where Kirkes won't get there, unfortunately. It was aimed for Watara, he missed it, and Kirkes couldn't quite rescue it. Goal kick. Do you know it? Sending a message with your pass is something you told earlier on twice now. You, people are passing the ball into Dominic, but he's getting no info. He's a, he's a yard off. He can, he, he can pull something out of the bag, try a bit of trickery and a shot. But also, when he has executed the two passes, Solanke, they haven't been good enough. One's no. been, they've both been too strong. So there's, uh, again, a bit of uh, finesse needed from Dom Solanke in that position. The bro attacks have both broken down. Well, I'd be, I'd, I'd be thinking, I'm not going to give it away again. John Williams, the voice alongside me, the former Cherries defender and assistant manager. BBC Radio Solent and BBC Sounds in the 25th minute here on the south coast. Still level at nil-nil between Bournemouth and Chelsea. Five now here's five. a lot of room for Raheem Sterling for Chelsea, attacking the goal away to our left, approaching the penalty here. Gusto outside and Chelsea have got numbers here, but the ball from Gusto, driven across the six-yard box, was too close to the Cherries keeper, Neto. Well, we had, they had a five-on-five five there in that attack. We were caught short a little bit. Yeah, down that right-hand side. That right-hand side has been a bit of an issue. Sterling is having a bit of joy. Gusto helping out as well. And Zabani is happy to try and dribble the ball out of defence here, but then just... Uh, yeah, I think he just wants to give the lads a breather. Just at the small moments in time, it feels like they could do with a bit of a blow. I just see the Cherries... Uh, their versatility here as Lewis Cook just drops into the defensive line as once Zabani started to make his move forward, Lewis Cook just covers almost as a, a centre-half. Here's Aarons, down this right-hand side for the Cherries, 30 yards from the Chelsea goal. Aarons using a bit of space to move in field. Nice run by Christie down this right-hand side, who takes it onto his left foot, lifts one towards the back post. Watara coming in, Billing scooped it out of the sky nicely and nearly set himself for a shot, but now the Cherries are committed forward as Chelsea break up to halfway with Gallagher. Dangle's just behind him, he needed a shout, Phil Bill. Nearly ran for him, didn't it? Sort of scooping it from uh, shoulder height down with his foot. As Chelsea have to come back to the halfway line once again here as Bournemouth quickly regain their shape. And it remains nil-nil. Chelsea have hit the post, a scuffed effort from Nicholas Jackson, had Neto flailing, and Robert Sanchez in the Chelsea goal making a smothering save to deny Dongo Watara at the back post. So both teams have had decent chances, but so far nil-nil. Chelsea have four points from their four games, Bournemouth have two in the draws with Brentford and West Ham. They've only beaten Everton and Leicester in the Premier League more times than they've beaten Chelsea. It's an amazing record, though, it is, isn't it? it? It's just Chelsea have been... They've obviously had so many managers and so many spells of flux in the last few years, Chelsea, that Bournemouth have managed to strike at good times. A few of them away from home as well. <laughs> yeah, three of the wins have been away. Chelsea have it, they're just playing it around at the back of the minute. You're not missing too much, as the ball is with Thiago Silva. The fulcrum of the... Chelsea defence, remember they have a very, very young bench. Six of their nine subs today, Chelsea, have never made a Premier League appearance, including two keepers. Uh, Zabani was pushed over off the ball there, but the referee was happy with it, and Nicholas Jackson is moving forward, and it's Tavernier who works his way back and pinches the ball superbly from Jackson on the edge of the box. And now Aaron's driving up the field with nothing ahead of him. Big switch. Oh, turned back. There were two available, weren't they? Billing and Watara for Ryan Christie to switch it out to the left, but then a nice bit of vision by Tavernier saw Lewis Cook in a bit of space to switch the point of the attack by Kelly out to the left-hand side. Yeah, it's, it's got over there finally. We should have got there a lot quicker. Oh, Kirk is putting Billing in a spot, and Billing got his heels clipped there, which was lucky because, again, it was an unnecessary ball from Kirk is to put Billing in a problem. And then Gallagher's thrown the ball away. Are we punishing that or not now? Well, 10 yards he threw that ball. Obviously not. Referee David Coote taking the lenient approach. <laughs> Can you either punish well, the ball or you don't, don't punish them? I, listen, I don't know. Lots of VAR controversy yesterday as Billing puts the ball over the top looking for Watara, headed away by Gusto. Only as far as Solanke, though. Tavernier for Bournemouth now. Oh, well, she's left it's still going to run for Kirkes, just outside the box. Then a poor touch from Christie and hammered away for Chelsea from the penalty area by Malo Gusto. Bournemouth still have it, though. Kirkes over on the left hand side now. Faced by Sterling, who's got back to do some defensive work. So we still wait for the first goal of the afternoon here in Dorset on BBC Radio Solon and BBC Sounds. Yeah, it's a lot better attacking the last five minutes. Lewis Cook back to Billing inside the Cherries half. They're just playing it around at the moment. Enzo Fernandez and Nicholas Jackson hold a watching brief, waiting for Bournemouth to 
make one of the passes that they're ready for and they know when to suddenly trigger their own press as Tavernier has his heels clipped by Thiago Silva on the halfway line, that'll be a Bournemouth free kick. It's the second time he's caught him, isn't it? Certainly the second time Tavernier's been caught. Free kick taken quickly down the right-hand side by Zabani, but Terry's hadn't really got themselves set for that free kick. Despite Zabani's quick thinking, and now Colwell and Thiago are playing a little individual game of keep ball over the head of Max Ahrens once and then twice, and now Colwell will try and bring it away down the left-hand side. Plays the ball. Well, he tried to play it into space, but actually he's curved it out of play, and it's going to be a throw into the Cherries, 25 yards from goal. The work these fullbacks getting through. We're talking about wingers being need to be refreshed. <laughs> these fullbacks are up and down all day. Well. That is a, a point, isn't it, in terms of the left-hand side? Cherries don't have anybody else except Kirk is, really. They've got Lloyd Kelly as a, a fill-in. Cherries have got Adam Smith in reserve on the right-hand side. Kirk has did get cramped, didn't he, at Brentford? He did at Brentford, ran out of steam. Tavernier from the throw-in. Now he's picked it up again from Billing. Right corner of the area, manages to smuggle it out. Ryan Christie to shoot. Not a great shot into a crowd of legs. Blocked away by Chelsea. Kelly was brave there against Nicholas Jackson. It's bounced fortuitously for Bournemouth there. Could have gone anywhere in the centre circle with that high line. It would have been half a pitch for Jackson to run into. Yes, it would have. Just got a bit of a lucky break there. Long diagonal out towards this right-hand side from Kelly. Looking for Tavernier. The backpedalling Colwell wins the header. Now to play it goes. Again, that's the kind of vision that Iraola is looking for from his centre-backs. Yeah. When the option is there, go long with those diags. Lewis Kirk just shrugs off Enzo Fernandez, leaves the 100 million pound man on his backside there. Now Kelly out to the left hand side to Wataro, who's level with the edge of the Chelsea penalty area. The Cherries attack from left to right. Wataro coming across the top of the box, tries a shot with his right foot. He can shoot with his right foot, but you wouldn't know throw it. In. You wouldn't know it from that shot, which has amazingly gone out for a throw. <laughs> no, he didn't catch that, as you can imagine. Jordan for a throw in. Having played with me, Jordan Clark will testify that that was like me on the first tee there. You that can one do that. Yeah? Going. I can literally make it go sideways it's a dif off the tee. It's a difficult skill to try. Yeah. Matara got that all wrong on his weaker foot coming off the left hand side. Of course, that is the problem when you play with the inverted wingers, but one of them is on the wrong side. Watara there. If he's cutting in, every shot is going to be on his weaker foot, isn't it? Yeah, uh, we've all done it. I'm sure you've put a few shots out for a throw in your time. Oh. Even with, those, with a good foot. Even those 25-yard overhead kicks that you <laughs> tell me about that used to go in off the underside of the bar. Uh, Cherries <laughs> have got a problem here. Is, uh, just waiting to see Phil Billing as he blocked out that challenge there from Chelsea. As uh, He's hurt his foot and he's off the field here. He's actually gone down off the field. So he hasn't so he's done... He's not faking, is he? Well, he hasn't done the classic, which is roll back on the field to get the game stopped. Uh, he's off the field. So the Cherries physio, Scott McAllister, has had to come and treat Billing off the field. So Bournemouth down to 10 momentarily. So Ryan Christie's going to have to take a slightly deeper midfield role at the moment. Yes, 31 gone, nil-nil. He's back there now. So Billing being treated away to our right towards the Chelsea corner flag. The ball's with Ugachukwu in the centre of the Chelsea midfield. The French under-21 internationals, one of those signed on a seven-year deal, as they do these days, to negate the effect of or help the effect of financial fair play the amortization of the players value over long contracts that's why we see these seven eight con eight year contracts now for those who've got the financial, and you there was a trick to it yeah the financial clout to be able to offer those and commit that kind of money over such a long period of time ball over on the right hand side with Chelsea halfway inside the Cherries half of the field Gusto into the feet of Gallagher plays a little one two but oh. Lloyd Kelly was there and I think with 10 men on the field Lloyd Kelly just again took a percentage call there a man down, let's not be defending with 10. He's Billing's not moving that freely, is he, Willow? No, he's not, I think he's going off. <coughs> limping along the sideline here, the fourth official, Tim Robinson, is just coming along to signal whether he's going back on. Billing is jogging back on. Chelsea, meanwhile, a 25 yards from goal here. Jackson getting away from three red shirts in front of him. Comes to the left by Colwell, now Mudrick, left corner of the penalty area. Couple of bits of step over football, into Conor Gallagher. Great first touch away from the man, and then a good block by Neto, and the Cherries have got it clear. There was some lovely footwork in there from Conor Gallagher to open up the space for a shot and as he drove it low Neto was down quickly to his right to save oh fantastic work by Neto I thought he'd done him a treat oh was low down by his feet difficult for goalkeepers if they don't strikes it quite well bodies in front of him as well well if the, yeah bodies but if, if, you, if you don't kick it away you yeah. don't usually get your foot there good save that 
And actually, sometimes it can, and this sounds stupid, can be too close to the keeper, yeah, can't exactly, it? Yeah, exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah, almost gets you under your sort of armpit kind of area, but Neto reacted really well there. Bournemouth fans groaned because that was poor from the Cherries restart, and eventually they have got it back, billing on the ball and seemingly back to fitness. Driving up to the halfway line, just shakes off Enzo Fernandez, and he's put the Cherries in trouble. And now Thiago Silva carries it forward here for Chelsea. 35 yards out, the Chelsea fans are shouting shoot. Charitably, Thiago, having been given the ball back easily, just lofts it straight into Neto's hands. Oh, that went all away for no reason. Completely <coughs> messed the cross up, thank goodness. Still Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. Exactly 34 minutes have been played on this Sunday afternoon. And Zabani happy again to carry the ball up inside the Chelsea half. And then again for Zabani does the hard bit, which is draw some Chelsea players towards him to open up space, and then over hits the ball to Aaron straight out for a throw. Yeah, outside of his right, left foot. So Chelsea will take the restart down in front of us. Colwell has it. Iraola and Pochettino, both with a double teapot on at the moment, down in the technical areas. Both with probably some things that are pleasing them and some things that aren't. There's an aerial challenge there, which has left Thiago Silva on the deck. It was quite a heavy landing as he came down. I think he landed on his maybe his shoulder or yeah, his lower I hope back. It's not a shoulder. Better it's back and you get winded. He's all right. He's sitting up now, Thiago Silva on the uh, on the turf. 14 games, by the way, since the Maurizio Pochettino team kept an away clean sheet. 14 games. Well, going back through his uh, managerial times, he's only had four games in charge of Chelsea, but interesting numbers that. Obviously uh, got his break in English football down the road at Southampton. As the ball is back with Thiago, who manages to uh, get back to fitness, not moving fully freely yet as Lloyd Kelly wins it back ahead of Conor Gallagher and again referee happy Watara has it and again Watara is brushed off it too easily there by Gusto and now Sterling up towards the halfway line for Chelsea into the final 10 minutes of the half still waiting for the deadlock to be broken here Sterling's got space to run into here and he's doing so at pace and he tried to slip it into Nicholas Jackson it was well read by Lloyd Kelly who stepped across inside left and shut the door and then Solanke's clipped by Disassi and it'll be a free kick to the Cherries short of halfway well done Dominic just take the pressure off his there they had one. every time I see Sterling go there's a chance Dominic getting in. Tried a quick one there up against uh, the Chelsea oh. back line. Thiago Silva was ultra casual as Solanke closed down inside the I penalty thought area. He, I thought he just caught it with his studs. It almost like he tried to scissor kick it yeah. almost like back to his keeper Sanchez, who to be fair was very good with the ball at his feet, as you have to be with a uh, in a Deserby team previously. Actually, Robert Sanchez got dropped by Deserby because he wasn't as good with his feet as Jason Steele, who's now uh, in goal for Brighton and was in goal yesterday. But didn't work out too badly for Sanchez. He got himself a move to Chelsea. Although, is that a move down the table? Brighton to Chelsea. The way Brighton are playing at the minute, you'd say it probably is. He's got it at the feet of the minute, Sanchez. Chelsea have come to a complete stop. The game is actually live, but everybody stopped, and Sanchez was just stood there waiting for somebody to trigger some sort of movement. It comes out to the left-hand side, and Enzo Fernandez over the halfway line. Lewis Cook was a bit too tight to him on that occasion. No, it's great to liking. see. I love it. He's climbing all over him. That's just what you want when you're, when you're trying to press. Until the whistle goes for a free kick. Well, that may be it. Disassi on the ball over on the far side. I was chatting with our colleague Vicky Sparks from Five Live before the game because at the World Cup in Qatar, Disassi's family specifically spoke to my French colleague and said he, he wants to, his name is Disassi, not Disassi. So that's why I've been calling him that. But apparently in the Premier League pronunciation guide, he calls himself De Sassi. I think it's De Sassi if he comes to Axel. Liverpool. You call him Axel anyway, well, that's his first name. The ball is with Chelsea over on the right-hand side, and Bournemouth get a throw-in deep inside their own territory, far side the left, as Kirkes won it off Gusto. It's quite a good battle, that, down the left-hand side, because you would say that Kirkes plays with Gusto, and today he's up against Gusto. A sterling effort as well from Kirkes, who's also up against Sterling on the far side. Good challenge today for the 19-year-old Milos Kerkez as Chelsea have to go back to Robert Sanchez, their goalkeeper again, 30 yards from his own net, who again is happy just to carry the ball back on the ground. He's moving backwards towards his own penalty area. Eventually, Ugochukwu comes and provides the short option. Now Colwell finds himself under pressure. Bournemouth quickly sending their men forward to press as Colwell brings it out. Christie again, head down, charging, arms and legs pumping as he tried to close down Colwell, who knocks it down the left-hand side for Chelsea, but there's Lloyd Kelly again. Good positional sense, good pace and strength, and back to his keeper. Excellent by Kelly, yeah. No doubt who's going to win that race. 
And if he is looking for uh, moves, as Sherry's won a free kick there for a foul on Zabani. If, if Lloyd Kelly is trying to impress bigger clubs going forward, playing well against in these games, on the box against Chelsea, it's not going to hurt, is it? Never does. You've got to give, keep giving you all in training, keep giving you all on the pitch. Off the pitch, everything's got to just continue until something falls. Cherry's one of five Premier League teams still waiting for their first win of the season. Sheffield United got very close yesterday. But uh, in the end got pegged back. Luton, Everton, Burnley, the others still waiting for their first Premier League win. Nil-nil here, we've got six minutes till half-time. Kirkes has fouled Sterling. Chelsea fans are signalling for a yellow card on Kirkes there. They're saying that the challenge by Sterling earlier on on Solanke was the same for which Sterling got booked. Yeah. Just having a replay of that one. I mean, it's a shirt pull from Kirkes once and then twice, and then he slid in and brought him down. You might argue that could have been a yellow for Kirkes. They're coming down that side again here. Chelsea the right with Gusto to the top of the box. Here's Sterling. Tried to go through the legs of Kirkes there, who managed to close them in time. Didn't get megged inside the penalty area. And Bournemouth bring it away. Watara's in a race with Disassi on the far side. But Disassi, what he lacked in pace there, he had in strength. Dominic's done fantastic at times. Just to hold the ball up. It's only brief, but then he drops it in the path. Just allows us to get up the pitch. Some rare noise from the Chelsea fans on that far side. Who I could, the only song I can remember so far is Chelsea reject to Dom Solanke, but not too much else from the visiting 1,400 Chelsea supporters. Directly opposite us on the far side here at the Vitality Stadium. Max Ahrens wins it back off Mudrick. Excellent work from the Cherries fullback. The challenge from Mudrick, it runs loose for Christie. Right side of the area, he goes past Enzo Fernandez. Christie then tried oh. to go for the back post, but planted it straight in the hands of the goalkeeper. Oh, he's done fantastic to get where he did. Just the, the, the shot was weak. I'll be interested to see if it comes back for a yellow card for Mudrick, by the way, in a moment, because the advantage was played there, and that wasn't one of those where he was trying to stop the, uh, stop the game with a cynical foul. It was a, a genuine late tackle from Mudrick, so the referee can come back and book him for that if he decides to. Four minutes and a half till half-time. Here's Mudrick in an attacking sense. He definitely will get booked now because he's just clattered errands. Some would say he might have been booked then? for that one. He could have got booked for that one. That could be two yellow cards in one, but he's only going to get one. It would take a bold bit of refereeing to produce two yellow cards in the same passage of play. Can't be out. Give him a shout. The second They can't advise on yellows, Willow. No. Uh, the second one was definitely more clear-cut yellow than the... Uh, the first and Chelsea fans not happy thinking that Kirkes should have had a yellow a moment ago I don't think even they could argue that Mudrick there didn't deserve a booking for clattering into Max Aarons Chelsea fans are starting to head for the half-time Bovril bar Bovril bar it's always Bovril isn't it there must be another beef based meat drink in the world oxtail is that beef yeah ox isn't it, isn't it an ox an ox isn't a, uh, a cow as far as I know well anyway He'll do, it's better than Bovril. Cow's tail. Three and a half, yeah, but Bovril's awful. Kelly, football club bars still sell it, and people still buy it. Nil-nil, here's Kirkes, halfway inside the Chelsea half. Kirkes down the left-hand side, looking for Watara, who had the Cherries' best chance earlier on, but not for the first time today, Watara's run straight down a, a dead end. Yes, I know, but he's been positive, <laughs> he's trying to get at people. Nice help on there by Enzo Fernandez, which took a couple of Cherries players out of it as the Cherries try and defend and Watara now is having to chase back at his left back position trying to get there ahead of Nicholas Jackson over on that far side Watara's there gets his foot in and it's going to be out of play it's actually a Chelsea throw on the far side oh Willow tell you what you've come up trumps here because Jordan Clark on online and you've come up trumps without even knowing it uh Go on. Because oxtail soup is a soup made with is. beef tails. Yes. The word ox in this context is a legacy of something that's too complicated for me to say. It's a bull. Anyway. Amazing. Let's take you through the rest of the half. John Williams. <laughs> I'm off to hang my tail between my legs, not an ox's one. Two and a half minutes to go until half-time. Nil-nil. Bournemouth, Chelsea. Chelsea have it over on the far side, the right. Gusto coming off the right-hand side, but he lost oh. it under his foot. And then the ball to try and find Solanke just... It, it wasn't what it needed to be, and Solanke therefore was in, under pressure, and he's eventually given away a free kick, or the Cherries have, halfway inside the Cherries' half, taken quickly from the wrong spot by Gallagher, and that'll be another restart for Chelsea. Oh, Dominic could have got, got that out. Tav was in a race, just trying to stay on side. Chelsea do take it this time. Down the right-hand side, Iriola's got his hands out on the touchline, saying, why weren't we switched on to that, as Chelsea took a quick one down the right side of the box. But they know, you need two on him every time he's on the ball. Sterling, this is, that John's talking about, for those who can't see the game, Sterling, which is everybody. Sorry. Sterling over on the right-hand side. 
back towards Gallagher who swings one, Augusto rather who swings one deep and way too deep. Too much gusto. Trailing over the hat. And there we go, John. There's your freebie. Too much gusto on that one from Gusto. I wonder if there's any oxtail soup in the uh, in the concourses here. I might go and try it <laughs> to see if it tastes like beef or pig. Uh, cherries are going to take this restart. The ball is back with Neto away to our left. Just over a minute till half time. Your verdict, very welcome on. Uh, who's this asking? Who's this on Twitter? Solent Sport. Can you tell them it's Philip, not Billing? Linny P on Twitter. We've been through this, no, Linny no. P. We've been through yeah, this. Yeah, we have. Billing is fine. That's from Philip Billing himself. Philip is what he wants on his shirt. But Billing is fine in vocal use. So thank you, Linny, for the tweet at Solent Sport. But uh, you're late to the party on that one. We did that about three weeks ago. Lewis Cook tried to come away with it, but a free kick to Chelsea, 10 yards over the halfway line. Final attack probably coming at the half. There haven't been too many stoppages. We might get a couple of minutes added on here. Uh, Thiago was down for a little bit, wasn't he? But apart from that, not too many reasons to stop the game. At Solent Sport is where to send your verdict on the first half, by the way. What are your thoughts on the uh, the selection today by Ira Ola as well? What changes would you make maybe going forward in this game as Christie goes down holding his face? But uh, referee allowing play to continue. Colwell down the left-hand side for Chelsea here. Mudrik Christie's slowly getting back to his feet towards the halfway line. This is opposite number 10, Mudrik on the ball. Plays a little one-two with Jackson. But Chelsea forced backwards towards the halfway line. And once again, Chelsea trying to build from deeper. Mudrik. Away from Christie, who is back to life now. Little one-two tries to find Enzo Fernandez into the penalty area, and then Kelly was caught on the edge of the box. Yeah, now for a free kick to the Cherries. One added minute, which is probably a record low for the Premier League this season, Rollo. One. <coughs> I could waste that myself on my own. Well, thankfully, I mean, it's good. One minute means there hasn't been any time wasting. There hasn't been any messing around. The game's just cracked on, which it has mainly. Yeah, it has. It's been good to see. At Solent Sport for your verdict. You can also WhatsApp us 08000 321 treble three. You need to put your name on and put your first word as Solent, otherwise it won't come through to us. It'll go awry. 08000 321 treble three. What is your favourite type of soup? Is it oxtail? <laughs> 08000 321 treble three or tweet us at Solent Sport. I'm off to learn about soup over the half uh, half time interval. Try not to make the same mistake again about the origin of oxtail. As the ball comes back to the edge of the pit. You can tell I've never never had it, by the way, oxtail soup. You're joking. It's the one that always gets left on the shelf at the supermarket, isn't it? No. Chicken and vegetable, beef, no problem. Pea and ham, no problem. Oxtail, definitely not. Last one in the cupboard. Please. That's the half-time whistle from David Coop. Um, it's Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil at the interval. And Bournemouth fans applauding as their team go off Willow at half-time. Because, yes, Chelsea have had, I guess, the kind of threat, carried the kind of threat that you would expect from them. They've hit the post, Neto's made a good save as well. But at the other end, Bournemouth have had some moments, albeit just a little bit of quality lacking in the final third with the final passes. Watara saved by the advancing Sanchez, the best that Bournemouth managed from a goal threat point of view. Yeah, Sanchez, that was a really good save. I thought he's just going to roll it underneath him, but... No, he took it on first time, tried to lift it, but couldn't quite get on. I think Andy Leaney will be, be OK with it, what, what he's seen so so far. There's uh, there's lots of pluses to come out of this game. Watara, well, obviously, you know, it's his first start of the season, so we would expect him probably not to last the 90. One or two of the bits of flair that we've seen from him going forward, but maybe just showing a little bit of rustiness at times as well. Where, where else uh, are you thinking Andoni might be thinking that he can tweak it? Well, like, um, obviously the wingers spring to mind both both times, doesn't they? You know, both not had many games, and uh, I'd quite like to see the, the new boy. That, that would be... Sinistera. No? Yes, that's pretty good, Willow. Lewis Sinistera. We may well see him from the bench. He has been playing, of course. He played for Leeds and he has been playing for Colombia as well. So he has got some match fitness. Maybe we'll see him on Unleashed in the second half. But all in all, Chelsea probably having the better of the half, but it's on as even at the interval. Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. This is BBC Radio Solent Sport. Headlines then at half time here at the Vitality Stadium. Still waiting for the breakthrough, but so far so good from the Cherries and a good opportunity as well from Dongo Watara to open the scoring in that first half. I wonder how long it'll be before we see any changes from Andoni Ira Ola. Have your say, Bournemouth fans, on the first 45 and many and any substitutes that you perhaps like to see on in the 
first few minutes of the second half, maybe even at half time. At Solent Sport on Twitter, 08,321333, the WhatsApp number. Save it into your contacts in your phone. It'll make it easier and quicker for next time. Start your WhatsApp messages with the word Solon. You can also text 81333. Your messages there need to start with Solent as well to reach us here in the press box at Vitality Stadium. Don't forget they'll be charged at your standard network rate. And by all means, stick your name on there as well so that we can give you a shout out. Coming up during the halftime break, we are going to hear some reaction from the FA Cup yesterday as Wimborne Town were knocked out by Torquay United in front of a record crowd at New Cuthbury. We brought you live commentary of the game. We'll hear from the Wimborne boss, Tim Seals. We'll also get some reaction as well from Saints women after a big win away at Reading in the championship earlier on today. 4-1 victory. We'll hear from the manager, Marianne Spacey Kale. That's on the way for you. Your messages as well, please, on the home of live sport across the South. BBC Radio Solent. Sport. Jordan Clark. BBC Radio Solent Sport. Players heading out, or the substitutes heading out to just start their warm ups uh, during the half time break. Pleased to say the rain has pretty much completely stopped now, and the skies overhead are a lot lighter than they were when it was thunderstorms and torrential rain when we first arrived at the ground and for most of the first half as well wouldn't be surprised to see it blow back in at some point in the second uh, it's just gone 10 to 3 we're with you through until 5.30 this evening 4.30 I should say in fact we'll bring you all the post-match reaction uh, at the end of the game try and bring you an interview with Andonia Raola before we go off air of course you'll get the thoughts of John Williams as well and a reminder we are available online on BBC Sounds today so if you've got the app on your smartphones then stay with us right the way through to hear all of the fallout and on your smart speaker as well if you ask it to play BBC Radio so as well as the usual FM, DAB and Freeview TV channels. Hello to Alan listening in from Chepstow. Great to have you there again, Alan. Says not a bad first half from Bournemouth. Let's hope the second is better. Yeah, you and everyone, bar the Chelsea fans opposite, I'm sure, packed into the ground, although they'll be hoping for better as well, despite dominating a lot of the possession in that first half. Right, let's tell you what's happened elsewhere today then. In the Championship, Leeds won 3-0 away at Millwall. Jaden Anthony, on loan from Bournemouth, got on off the bench in the second half. I think he got about half an hour of that game, 20 minutes or so. A couple of goals in there for their new signing, Joel Perrault, arriving from Swansea over the summer. And Rutter got the third to uh, absolutely seal the three points for Leeds away at Millwall. And... Coming up in the Premier League later at 4.30, Everton against Arsenal. Got a full fixture list of women's games today as well. Southampton, well, Saints kicked off earlier on at 12 o'clock in the Championship. A 4-1 win away at Reading. Molly Pike, of course, from this part of the world, went to Caulfield School in Poole. Now playing for Saints, she opened the scoring. May well have been her first goal for Saints, I think, having moved there over the summer. Uh, it was a penalty for Katie Wilkinson. Atlanta Primus scored on her debut as well. Of course, daughter of Linvoy Primus, the former Portsmouth and uh, Reading defender. And Gemma Perfield added the fourth for Saints as well, eight minutes from time. In the two o'clock kickoffs in the Women's National League, Southern Premier, Pompey women, they were nil nil with uh, Chatham Town the last time I checked. A Bournemouth 1-0 up over Maidenhead. Gemma McGuinness with the goal. That in Division 1 of the Women's National League, South West. Moneyfield's in that same division, 4-0 up over Portishead Town. And um, Southampton Women FC, 3-1 up away at Swindon Town. Again, in Division 1 South West of the Women's National League. Let's bring you some reaction from... Uh, Saints women now, their championship game earlier on and that 4-1 win over Reading. We can hear from the Saints boss, um, Marianne spacey Kell. She's been speaking to Ian Wilding. Marianne, a little bit like the Lewis game, a near-perfect afternoon for you. Yeah, near again we conceded, which doesn't help, but I thought we responded really well from last week and, you know, we were disappointing last week that we didn't score, but pleased with the performance. I think this year, we're, this, this, year this game we were 
delighted with the performance and the fact that we put the ball in the back of the net. So there's still stuff to do, but we're, we're certainly moving in the right direction after today. And what about that performance of Molly Pike? A goal and assist, and she won the penalty. Yeah, you know, she was flying today, and, you know, she's been called up into England under 23s, and, you know, that just gives her another boost for her confidence. But she's playing with confidence and playing with the trust of, as she trusts herself, and the players around her trust each other, so in, including Molly. So, you know, I think it's really important that we we kind of see what Molly's strengths are, play to those strengths, but also trust each other with, with the ball and make sure those runs that she makes, uh, we pick them out. Is it fair to say that she's an intelligent player? Because it was a really neat finish rather than whacking it. And then obviously the, the assist as well was a very clever pass. Yeah, she's, you know, she, we, we, the football's half played in the, with the feet and half played in the brain, isn't it? So she thought that through and, you know, she's very clever with her movements. So sometimes yeah. it's not to get on the ball, sometimes it is to get on the ball. And we've just got to make sure that we, we recognise what those movements are. But, yeah, she's, she's had a really good afternoon. And when she came out on the, came off onto the bench, I think she got the elevation that she deserved. Nice story as well for uh, Atlanta Primus, scoring on her debut and at the ground where her dad, Linvoy, used to play as well at, at Reading. So how pleased are you for her? Yeah, you know, we've, she came back from the World Cup. We had to manage her as she came back from the World Cup and it was a, a long time away. But, you know, she's looked good in training this week and, and, you know, it was an obvious choice to put her in just for, the, for this game and give her the chance to showcase why we've signed her. And a good for Casey Wilkinson, that's a, a perfect penalty for her, isn't it? Absolutely, what a penalty that was. And, you know, again, Molly's run to win it, but you, you know once Mil Wilco's got the ball in her hands, she's going to put it on the spot and, you know, she's going to put it away, but it was a cracking penalty. You look at the last four games now, though, nine points. How pleased are you with that return? Yeah, no, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. You know, we, we, we set out to start the season really well and I'm happy with where we are at the moment. Like I said, there's still a lot of work to do and there's still stuff that we can improve on. But today I thought we had a really good performance and, and played the game plan really well. So delighted, proud of the players, proud of the staff because it could have been easy to just sulk about last week, but we came back really positive and I think that showed in the, in the performance today. And as you say positive, I mean, I know they scored at the end, but even at four, it felt like you're really pushing for a fifth so that must you know really encourage you the players just never stopped all game yeah definitely and like i said we you know we we, we want to really dominate the ball and dominate the opposition and i think we did that for big parts of the game but we just got a little bit untidy at the end and that's what happens in this league people will punish you so you know it's good that it didn't hurt us but we still want to have a clean sheet where possible a couple of weeks now without a game but i suppose you want them to come in now don't you thick and fast after that yeah. performance yeah and they will in october october's a big month so uh, yeah we, it gives us a good chance to just evaluate where we are in the first four games players going off to international duty so we wish them all the best and they just come back fit well and healthy and ready for the next home game Marianne Spacey Cow, Saints women's boss with Ian Wilding there after their 4-1 win away at Reading in the women's championship in an earlier 12 o'clock kickoff today listening to Jordan Clark and Solent Sport three minutes to three we are live from the Vitality Stadium where it is just brightening and it brightening up a bit after some hideous weather today so far Bournemouth nil nil with Chelsea in the Premier League second half commentary with Chris Temple and John Williams to come on BBC Sounds online across the UK on your smart speaker on FM DAB and Freeview television channels 726 and 722 as well uh, hello to the Bournemouth Sydney supporters group who are looking forward to Chris Temple's uh, oxtail soup half-time report. Uh, I think he's going to struggle to get it down in the press room, to be honest with you. Um, I know you can't get it over in Australia, which is a, a, a real shame for you. John Williams, one of his favourites, uh, he normally goes for soup down in the press room, but I don't think they do oxtail, but we'll find out. Chris is just making his way back up to the commentary position now. Let me bring some other headlines at half-time from elsewhere. In uh, Formula One, the Singapore Grand Prix, it was a bit of a thrilling finish. Carlos Sainz, the Ferrari driver, has won it, held off. Uh, McLaren's Lando Norris who took um, second position breathless finale apparently the Mercedes drivers charging through as well to the finish line Lewis Hamilton taking third place in the end with George Russell crashing out Max Verstappen finishing fifth so Red Bull's 15 race winning run comes to an end and in the Rugby Union World Cup in Pool B, it's finished South Africa 33, Romania nil. Australia against Fiji is on the way from 4.45. And then at 8 o'clock in Pool D, England's second match of the tournament. 
they take on Japan. Right, let's bring you some reaction from yesterday now, shall we? We brought you live commentary of Pompey's one-all draw in dramatic fashion away at Derby with Colby Bishop getting a late equaliser. There's reaction to that game up on BBC Sounds. And we're also at New Cuthbury as well, where a record crowd of more than 1,500 took in Wimborne against Torquay United in the FA Cup second qualifying round. Wimborne knocked out 3-0 in the end. Their manager, Tim Sills, who of course used to play for Torquay himself, spoke to Cliff Pledge after the game. Wimborne Town manager Tim Sills, reflections on the FA Cup tie today? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we started well, forced keeper into a couple of decent saves quite early on, um, and then just had probably a 10-minute spell where we just became a good, little bit ragged. Um, they started carving us open a little bit too much at will, um, and I thought our, just, our shape just kind of went a little bit awry at that point, and obviously they got the two goals, and the difference, obviously, between the levels is um, if you, you know, you give a team like this a chance, they're probably going to take it, whereas, you know, you might get away with that little bit at our level, uh, and we knew that was going to be the case, so conceding those kind of chances was, was a little bit disappointing. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I thought we, we regrouped, we, we finished the first half strong, had some, again, creating half, really, really good chances, to be fair, and that went into the second half. Um, and then, yeah, you know, you, you kind of go positive with your changes, 25 seconds after your third sub, that third sub knocks himself out on the back of someone's head, which is really unfortunate luck. And you're playing the rest of the game with 10 men. And even then, I thought, you know, we created chances still even then. And it was great to see the boys just carry on, carry on. Obviously, there was always going to be a chance of a sucker punch with the third goal. Um, and it, you know, not the stuffing out of us a little bit, but boys never gave up. They never gave in. These sorts of occasions, you've got to keep going to the end. And I was proud of every one of them. And for the club, as an occasion, 1,852 here by far and away, a record attendance. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely fantastic for the club. I've said that all along. Personally, it was it was a great draw. Um, but ultimately, it's about the club and for the club to have an occasion like this, to put it on, um, to have all those, those logistics going with it that essentially we want on a regular basis. You know, that's where we want to be. We want to be involved in these types of games, not just on a special one-off occasion, and um, yeah, yeah, I can't can't argue with it with it at all. It was it was great to see such a big crowd here. Like I say, I thought we played uh, you know really well for a lot of the game. Shame we couldn't quite give them that that goal to cheer, but hopefully they, a lot of them have seen enough to come back again. Your players not too disappointed. I saw you sort of giving them handshakes and high fives rather than stern words. Oh yeah, you know, like I say, we're playing against a team that's flying high, two leagues above, and. For me, I thought we matched them for, for large spells of the game, you know, and it's just those moments of quality that's probably the big difference, and that's what we've got to aspire to. And, um, oh yeah, I can't fault their effort, I can't fault their weight, work rate, their attitude, so I'm never going to be harsh on them when that happens. You know, the only time I'll ever shout and scream is when that's not happening. And again, I thought they equipped themselves brilliantly, and on a different day, it could have been, you know, a different result. Wimbledon boss Tim Seals with Cliff Pledge there after their defeat to Torquay United in the second qualifying round of the FA Cup yesterday. Right, players are back out here at the Vitality Stadium. It's goalless. Will we get a breakthrough in the second half? Doesn't look like there's going to be any immediate changes for either side. A reminder, listen online today across the UK on BBC Sounds. We've got the app on your smartphones downloaded. Just search for BBC Radio Solent. It's on your smart speaker as well, the game today. If you ask it to play BBC Radio Solent, we're on FM 103.8 and 96.1. Digital radio across Dorset, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Freeview Television Channel 726 and 72. To your commentary team, John Williams, alongside Chris Temple. Thank you very much indeed, Jordan. Thankfully, conditions much stiller, much drier than we had in the build-up to kick off earlier on. Now, brighter skies above as the sounds of Noni reverberate around the Vitality Stadium. For those maybe joining us, uh, not regulars, Noni, the uh, late Cherry supporter, his famous chant now turned into a, a PA and sound system rallying cry for the Cherries. Nil-nil then here between Bournemouth and Chelsea on BBC Radio Solon and BBC Sounds as well. I'll give you the full team lineups in a moment, but as Jordan says, no changes at the interval. Our officials this afternoon, David Coote is the man in the middle in a yellow shirt. Chelsea in their spearmint coloured change kit going from left to right. Bournemouth red, black and uh, red and black shirts, black shorts and socks. Chelsea have it in the left-back position at the moment. Cherries have Neto in goal. Aaron, Zabani, Kelly and Kirk as their defenders. Tavernier, Cook, Billing, Watara and Christie behind Solanke. 
The Cherry subs, as Chelsea still playing it around inside their own half. In fact, they've given it away. Cherry subs, Radu, Senesi, Smith, Rothwell, Traore, Brooks, Semenyo, Clivert and Sinistera. Their deadline day signing from Leeds. Chelsea have Sanchez in goal. The defenders, Colwell, Thiago, Disassi and Gusto. Then Gallagher, Ugachukwu and Fernandez, And Sterling and Mudrick, either side of Jackson. Their bench has a lot of unfamiliarity on it. Six of their nine subs have never made a, a Premier League experience, appearance. They have two goalkeepers on the bench as well. Bergstrom and Petrovic. And then Cole Palmer, Ben Chilwell, Ian Matson, and Washington, Gilchrist, Matos and Stutter. As out comes Robert Sanchez to the right side of his penalty area to allow that one to run through for a goal kick. The Chelsea injury list, I might as well give you while I've got an opportunity. Caicedo missing today with a knee injury. So add him to Breuer, Badiashiel, Rhys James, Chukwemeka, Lavia just signed from Southampton, Nkunku, Wesley Fofana. And that's just uh, the headline names that they're missing. So Pochettino has some availability issues. As Sanchez clears it away, left to right. A flat one up towards halfway. Kirkes against Sterling is going to be a battle, Willow, that we're going to have a very close eye on on this side of the field in this second yeah, half. Yeah, it's been good in the first half already. It's been good if you're Sterling. Yes. Yeah, but Kirky, yeah, it's done OK. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's uh, certainly going to be a baptism in a lot of games for Kirkes. It's a step up from the Eredivisie in Holland where he was playing last year with AZ Altmar. As Chelsea come down the left-hand side with their World Cup winner Enzo Fernandez up against Lewis Cook, who goes out to meet him. Fernandez with a little nutmeg, but Lewis Cook stuck to his task well there on the right side of his own penalty area. And then Aarons with a little chop back and a clearance up towards the halfway line. Just talking to Glenn Murray, the former Cherry striker at half-time, Willow, who's working with our colleagues from Five Live today, and he said the one thing he's been surprised at is that Bournemouth haven't really committed that many men forward at times. Well, interesting. Getting that balance right, isn't it, between yeah. that and all-out attack? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, something that Irola will have worked on, given Chelsea's relative strengths and weaknesses as it's cleared away up towards the halfway line by Chelsea again. Enzo Fernandez wins a free kick for another flailing arm. I think that's the second time that Lewis Cook has caught Fernandez with a flailing arm in the game. Free kicks his referee Coot. It's been a good battle, them two, hasn't it? Has been. Lewis Cook's been very close to Fernandez. The one player who has had a lot of space in the first half, and whether Cherries have tried to change anything is Conor Gallagher, but here's Mudrick, driving towards the penalty here for Chelsea, in comes the challenge of Aaron's got the ball, Mudrick goes, to, oh, referee's very belatedly given a free kick right on the edge of the box there, well, he waved it away initially, as it looked from our angle as if Aaron's came in and played the ball from behind Mudrick, but the free kick's been given, left of the D, mm, did he catch Mudrick before the ball, Willow? Seeing it from a different angle. He got the ball. Well, Mudrick then hit, uh, sort of knocked the ball forward himself. That's a, certainly one that would be debatable if anything comes of this for Chelsea. Left of the D, about a yard and a half outside the penalty area. Sterling loitering. Mudrick, who won the free kick, loitering from the challenge with Aaron. So, first real set-piece threat from in front of the goal, anyway, that Neto has had to organise himself for, having conceded that free kick to Matthias Jensen of Brentford. And then whipped it over the wall and caught him out at his near post. He's got to get his angles right here, Neto. And he's making sure, using every second available to him, leaning up against his post. They've laid down the draft excluder behind the wall as well. Lewis Cook is the one positioned on the ground. Which I'm sure it's lovely on the wet turf to be lying down there for a minute. As Sterling lines this one up. Thiago Silva's there as well. He's, Thiago Silva is angling his own Chelsea players who are on the end of the wall. Conor Gallagher and Mudrick there as well, but it's going to be Raheem Sterling with his right foot, who goes over the top, hits the angle, bounces down and over the line, but the flag's Side. up. Up goes the flag against Levi Colwell as he tucks it into the net from the rebound. And Raheem Sterling, while it was delivered with precision, came back off the woodwork with Neto completely stranded and Cherries get a let off. Second time in the game, Chelsea have hit the woodwork. Well, no way he could get near it, Neto, but thankfully... I think there was two in an offside spot. Well, down off the bar, actually closer to the line than I realised in the first instance, but unlike at Brentford, uh, this time no goal line technology, it's nearly bounced on the line, and again the science, the physics of that, that it bounced away from the goal, straight to Colwell, who was a yard offside as the free kick was struck, so there'll be no danger uh, of this being given. But Chelsea... Uh, feel unlucky. Conor Gallagher is uh, still down, by the way. That's why we're waiting for this delay. Uh, has something happened off the ball there? They're checking on VAR. I'm just having a look on the very edge of the TV shot that we're looking at. Conor Gallagher got caught by somebody's arm, I think. 
Anyway, after all that, it remains Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. Free kick to Bournemouth inside their own penalty area. Some free kick, wasn't it? Yeah. Of course, it's sweet. Well, Chelsea, they've had a bit, bit of trouble putting the ball in the net this season, and that, I guess, sums up their fortune so far. Bournemouth clear it long. Tavernier, 25 yards from goal here. He's got support from Christie. Now Phil Billing out towards the left-hand side. Dongo Watara. See how much he's got left. And again, oh. that's, I'm afraid that's symptomatic of Watara's performance today. Final third just hasn't been happening for him. And he just couldn't find Kirkes with that ball. It goes behind. Yeah, he's <coughs> that won't do him too much good. You know, he's lacking a little bit of confidence on his, obviously, first game back. Chelsea from the short goal kick. We've played 51 and a half minutes. BBC Radio Solon and BBC Sounds across the UK. Sunday afternoon, Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil in the company of the former Cherries defender, John Williams. That's a lovely layoff over the halfway line. Colwell striding forward from the back for Chelsea here. 25 yards out, squares it to the top of the box. Billing got a foot in. Lewis Cook there bravely ahead of Enzo Fernandez on the edge of the penalty area. And now with Colwell out of position, Bournemouth trying to attack down that right-hand side with Ryan Christie. Uga Chukwu is tracking him back. Christie infield, halfway inside the... Chelsea half of the field, but Bournemouth haven't really rushed to get too many numbers up there with him. Tavernier now across the top of the box and off target with his effort, Marcus Tavernier over the bar. Yeah, we've seen him do that one before, haven't we? Cuts in on his left foot. Couldn't keep it down under the crossbar. Yeah, he's three or four yards over the bar. It all came from Lewis Cook getting the better of Enzo Fernandez on the edge of his own penalty here. He will that attack. Yeah, again. Where it started oh. from. What a ball did that is. Did he mean that? Yeah, he did. Robert Sanchez straight along the ground, straight down the middle of the field to find Luka Chukwu in space. Now Jackson just holds off Zabani, left-hand side. And thankfully for the Cherries, Jackson with men arriving, Sterling and Fernandez in the penalty area, took it from an impossible angle off balance into the south stand. Well, Zabani and Kelly... They've looked after Jackson, and I've seen him in the past, and he's been a bit of a handful. Well, what he is trying to do there, I've no idea. I mean, he missed the goal by... If you had another goal next to the one that was there, he wouldn't even have hit, got hit on target on top that of one. a bus. That was, that was way off target from a very acute angle. No wonder Sterling in the middle and Fernandez were... Oh, oh goodness me, Zabani just letting the ball run away from him. I've seen that a couple of times in Zabani. It's just that, mo that moment of concentration waver, isn't it? almost thinking what he's going to do with the ball before he's actually got it under control. <laughs> it's enough to make John Williams' heart skip a few beats. Here's Kirkes, down the left-hand side, over halfway, plays it in behind, looking for Solanke. Lovely idea, just a little bit too much on the ball. Oh, what a shame. Just a little bit less, as you say. It would have run into Dom's path, and he's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, we were right behind that when we had a bit of left-footed suave around the outside yeah. of the defender, just skidded off the turf, the greasy turf, and through to the goalkeeper. 0-0 it remains, Aaron sticking very tight on that far side to Mudry, excellent defending from Max Aaron, who wins himself a free kick as well, just over the halfway line, that was touch-tight defending as they say, they've taken the short one which Tavernier was slightly surprised by and suddenly had Enzo Fernandez looking to pick his pocket, but it's back with Lloyd Kelly inside the Cherries half. Yeah, just <clears throat> I'd give it 20 minutes and then start thinking about maybe swapping the wingers. As long as that? <coughs> Only 15 to go in 20 minutes? Yeah, I'd give him 15. OK. Chelsea have it in the left-back position at the moment. Enzo Fernandez out there, the £106 million pound man. He played for Argentina against Ecuador over the international break against his Chelsea teammate, Moises Caicedo, who's not fit to play today as Lewis Cook's long ball over the top looking for Solanke is all the way through to Robert Sanchez. Cherry's just sending a couple of substitutes out to warm up. Justin Cliver is going out to warm up. And is that Hamid Traore? Couldn't see, he's running away from us. Sinistera, we think. Well, yeah. if this was the old days, I'd be running, <laughs> and I was sub, I'd be running past the manager's face to rem just to remind him that I am available. Well, Steve Fletcher used to do uh, a full stretching routine on the edge of the technical <laughs> area, didn't he? Next to whoever the Cherries manager happened to be. <laughs> 55 gone, Chelsea have it. A hint of some sort of sunshine trying to break through, Willow, which is impossible considering the weather we had earlier. Here come Chelsea down this near side with Gusto. The Frenchman holds it up, waits for support inside from Conor Gallagher, who threads a beautiful ball, looking for home for Sterling, who got away from Lloyd Kelly, who was covered nicely by Zabani, who reacted to the danger there that's and came across all, and cleared. That's what it's all about, helping your mate out when he drops a clanger. Sterling got away from Kelly easily. Back out it comes to Gusto again with tight dreadlocked hair on this right-hand side. Gets away from Kirkes, who's almost tried to rugby tackle him. Gusto's ball in this time isn't very good. And it's a comfortable clearance from Lloyd Kelly for the Cherries. Up over halfway where Solanke in a race with Disassi would be interesting. And Disassi has uh, rather made a mess of his clearance. And Robert Sanchez has to go charging across to prevent it going out for a corner. Quick throw it behind him. Well, 
and they haven't got anybody at the moment to take no. it. So they're just and Iriola is holding his hand out to say, everyone calm down, let's get in position. <laughs> Cherries fans reacting, they've got a, a throw in down by the corner flag, away to our left. And what has been a tight encounter, nil-nil between Bournemouth and Chelsea in the Premier League. It's a throw in, isn't it? Yep, throw in by the corner flag. As Kirkes eventually makes his way down that line to take it. There's five subs, three Chelsea and two Bournemouth warming up right by him. Kirkes tries to get to the ball, to slide that in, does brilliantly to retrieve it. Breaks to the top of the box, headed away by Mudrick for Chelsea. Now Lewis Cook takes it down, knocks it sideways. Here's Aarons. One more, it goes out wider still to Tavernier, just outside the right corner of the penalty area. Some room for Lewis Cook, 25 yards out, early ball in. Miscue by Gallagher, Chelsea have half cleared. Lewis Cook might get in there, oh. and Lewis Cook shoots for goal. Didn't catch it cleanly, straight at Sanchez. No, he didn't. It looked all, all right at one stage, like he was going to take it on the half volley, but I think he just, maybe the angle wasn't there. Well, of all the people, Willow, to be popping up there, taking a shot at goal, Lewis Cook wouldn't have been uh, one of the ones you'd expect. No. But playing with confidence today, Lewis Cook. That's poor from Chelsea, giving away easily, and here comes Aarons down the right-hand side, steaming towards the box. Max Aarons gets towards the byline, pulls it back behind Solanke, unfortunately, and too far away from Christie, and then both players go to the ground, and the referee says it was a, a fair chance. contest, and here's Kirkes, left side of the box, Solanke's in there, won't quite run for a red shirt, and eventually Thiago Silva makes hard work of clearing. It's a goal kick, there's people on the floor, that was a right old mess. The referee said it was a fair six and half a dozen of the other contest that left Gusto on the ground, the Bournemouth fans enjoyed that little passage of play. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Kerkes and Aarons have been a, 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 a real threat this half. Both chopping balls back. We just need someone to get on the end of one. So there will be a stoppage here. Uh, Gusto is down. As a result of the challenge, it was a tangle with Christie, which both players ended up on the floor. The referee animatedly waved away any claims for a free kick from either team and said just a coming together which uh, you know again you have to say fair enough officiating sometimes officials they look for look to give it one way or t'other but there he just said it's a fair coming yeah, together I think he's right yeah I'm just having a look to see what actually happened uh, that's left Gusto on the floor as Ryan Christie challenged he just sort of trapped Gusto's foot in the turf slightly I think uh, which is what's left Gusto on the deck in fact right that's a painful he one he stood that. on him yeah, on his him. knee yeah Ryan Christie somehow managed to knee the back of Gusto's heel into the turf so a slightly jarring ankle problem probably but he's sat up now Gusto still receiving treatment from the Cherries physios Cherries players coming across for a drink so Lewis Cook came across and got some uh, instructions he's having a good game he's having a Cook. good game Lewis Cook I'd agree with that definitely yeah I can't think of him being around uh, the game this much it turned in, in many others Chelsea have had some space in midfield but it's been mainly Conor Gallagher Lewis Cook is more worried about Enzo Fernandez yeah isn't he? he is and he's, rightly so he's had a good uh, a good contest with him a bit of a shadow appearing on the field now as the sun from behind the main stand where we are is that sea mist or sea mist yeah. where are you looking <laughs> to the right I think it's nearly sunshine I can see some blue willows you look over to the right towards the sea there is some blue right. sky yeah. anyway Chelsea uh uh, temporarily down to 10. Gusto has limped his way off to the sideline. Uh, commentators curse Willow as Lewis Cook gets a foot in it, goes straight over a throw <laughs> on the halfway line. Gusto is about to come back on <coughs> and it remains nil nil. How good's my coughing been today? But I went down to one cough every 10 minutes. Yeah. It's an improvement. I think, after it, I think the it's gone. Absolute fiasco at Brentford where I could barely get through a sentence without uh, coughing. As the ball is back with Lewis Cook again here on the edge of his own penalty area. This time he does clear left footed up towards halfway where Watara's come short to win it. And again, See, he's got to be told to hold that. Just nodded it straight to a blue shirt or a spearmint shirt. Got it, Gallagher again, picking his spaces between the lines. 30 yards out, the England man here to the right hand side. They've got a man over Sterling, tries to chop back on his left foot. Got it stuck under his feet for a minute, then he plays it behind Gusto, just outside the right edge of the penalty area. Chelsea's still in possession as we head towards the hour. Goalless here in, uh, in Dorset on the south coast on BBC Radio Solent and BBC Sounds. Gusto, 25 of that for Chelsea, looking for Mudrick. Well read by Kirkes, the Cherries left back, and he clears it over halfway where Solanke again will chase this as he who uses his goalkeeper, Sanchez. Yeah, it was just a bit too high for Dominic there. More a clearance than a pass. I mentioned about Pochettino teams will no clean sheet away in 14. They haven't won, or Pochettino teams haven't won in 13 away Premier League games across his uh, spells with Chelsea and Spurs. So away on the road, Pochettino's teams uh, do struggle a little bit or have done in the past as 
Referee Coots whistles for a free kick to Chelsea just outside the centre circle in the Bournemouth half. And I think we're going to see, looking down to the bench below, uh, Can't see a number. definitely going to see a Cherry's change at the moment. Again, there's too many bodies and uh, bits of metal work blocking. I think it's Clive. Uh, but it is Clive at Willow coming on. Good spot. Eventually we can see as he sits back down in his seat. As Kirkes and Sterling are wrestled, Kirkes is going to get a yellow here. That's probably the yellow card that's been coming the most. I would suggest as Kirkes that time wrestled Sterling to the ground off the ball. And now half an hour for Kirkes on a yellow with uh, no obvious oh, left no. back on the bench to suddenly say Kirkes you're gonna have to come off. No, he's gonna have to go real steady now. He's been trying to he's, he's done well. The both of them at fullbacks have done well. They've tried to get in front and nick the ball that way. Let's just have a look. Yeah, he's got a shirt. Got Kirk, his shirt. Kirkes go steady. Do you think that and those two it, things come together? Link up. Yeah, but do you think Kirkes has got it in his game to go steady? Anyway, well, I he needs he, to. He's got to. Clivert's coming on. Chelsea about to throw on a, a sub as well. Cole Palmer, I think, is coming on for them. This is a free kick to Chelsea. 35 yards out, right of centre, in the 62nd minute. With the sun trying to poke through this Sunday afternoon, and still level, nil-nil, between Bournemouth and Chelsea. This is going to be Mudrick with his right foot. Whips this one in deep towards the back post. Important header away from Kelly. Lands on the edge of the penalty area where Gallagher retrieves it for Chelsea. It was an excellent header from Kelly under real pressure from that sure set play. Was. Sterling out on this right-hand side again, up against Ryan Christie. Sterling feints to go around the outside, then tries to take on Christie. He's definitely got the pace of Christie, but Christie got a foot in and got a nick off Sterling. And Ryan Christie gives it the double fist pump to the crowd as well as a result of that. Good work back, Christie. First change coming up for Chelsea here. Cole Palmer coming on to replace Mikhailo Mudrik. So, the man who maybe slightly surprisingly from Manchester City joined Chelsea for... 40 odd million pounds. Yeah, he, he looks a player to me, to be honest. And it's going to be Watara Willow coming off to be replaced yeah. by Justin Clyburn. I think so. So good to see Watara back. Another option for Andoni Iraola. 62 minutes today. Had the best form of chance in the first half as well as the ball was slid across the penalty area. He was coming in at the far post. But out came Robert Sanchez to make an excellent smothering save. I would rather see Sinestra. Sinistera. Sinistera. The combination of Sinesi and Sinistera might give you a problem, Willow. It might. Yeah. Throw in Semenyo and Smith and various others as well. Solanke. You well, really have got trouble. You want to call him Sinatra. It's Frank Sinatra. Yeah. So he doesn't play like Frank Sinatra. Sinistera on the bench at the moment. One of the other remaining Cherry subs, along with Semenyo, Traore, Brooks, Rothwell, Sinesi, Smith and Radu. That's the eight that remain to Andoni Irola. Who remember used his three windows last week and couldn't change any more as Cliver's first involvement is to be fouled by Gusto. Cherry's take a quick free kick. Solanke's got some room here. Nobody left of the, the penalty box. area. Solanke might have to go himself. Knocks it down the left side of the penalty. Looking for Kirkes, who slides in on Sanchez. Uh, if that's Kirkes taking it steady, Willow, launching himself <laughs> in on the goalkeeper. And he went the wrong way, Dominic. I don't know if he got blocked off and they showed him down the line, but there was too much traffic there. Long ball from Chelsea out towards the far side. 64 minutes gone, nil-nil. Oceans of space again for Sterling. Arrows doing his nut on the sideline. Here's Cole Palmer on as a substitute, running up against Lloyd Kelly. And again, Lloyd Kelly has been nearly impassable today, and he gets the block in behind for a corner. Iraola was going absolutely potty there on the sideline. Yeah. Savini as well. They're both the, the two centre-halves have been... And, I have to, and the full-backs going forward especially. So, Cole Palmer... Showing a threat with his first involvement, replacing Mudrick, who'd been playing wider. Here comes the corner from Enzo Fernandez on this near side, the right for Chelsea. We have got some full sunshine breaking through now here. Fernandez in towards the edge of the six yard box, met by Philip Billing, who clears it away for the Cherries. Breaks down to Chelsea again, left of the D. Sterling, all very congested in there, round the outside, low ball into the six yard box. Colwell's in there, Neto's clawed it away, still bouncing around. Eventually, Kirkes hammers it away. That could have gone anywhere, but Neto, from a position on the ground, managed to throw up a hand and scoop the ball away. Yeah, magnificent by the goalkeeper. I don't know how he's got it, how he's seen it. It was all flashing round everywhere. Just stopping the game here, I think, Willow. Just checking for any any handballs or anything in there. Because it was pinning and pinging around like the proverbial pinball. Play's going to be restarted. It's all OK. But as the ball broke in, Neto got a foot on it first of all and then sort of pushed it away with two hands while he was lying on his backside. And eventually, Kirk has managed to complete the clearance. 25 to play. Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. Chelsea enjoying the better of the uh, the chances and the territory, you'd say, but at the moment, no way through. Of course, Andoni Iraola's team, the other thing they're looking for is a first 
Premier League clean sheet of the season as well. That will be good. <coughs> Kirk has hazard on this left-hand side. Interesting to see Iraola opt to make one change below. Last week, of course, made three individual changes in the three windows and then didn't have any more uh, windows available. Again, he's gone just with a single sub here in his first window. Be interested to see what he does with his next window. As Kirkes and Kelly, what they're doing on this near side, it was uh, a bit of ill communication between the two. Oh. And eventually get another chance with the throws. Kelly's first bit of hesitation, he should have cleared the ball. Again, it's that balance between trying to play it out fancifully. That's not a great throw from Kirkes, but Bournemouth do eventually, as Gallagher heads it out, advance 15, 20 yards down the touchline. Pochettino comes out of his technical area, the Chelsea manager, who's dispensed with his big overcoat now that the rain has relented. It's not a cold day, it's uh, upwards of 20 degrees probably. But certainly when the rain was bucketing down, it was uh, find anything you can. One of our colleagues, Alan Seabrook, in front of us, had to, got so wet, he had to go and buy a new polo top from the club shop. And then was panicking that he'd be seen as biased. Lewis Cook dribbling it out from the edge of his own penalty area. They got away with that one there, Ryan Christie. And a ball oh. for Cliver. What a ball from Christie just over here. Sanchez, great starting position. Ryan Christie absolutely sighed that ball through the middle of the Chelsea back line. Sanchez was out quickly ahead of Cliver. Solanke pushed over by Powell, was he? No. Referee allows play to continue inside the Chelsea half. Oh. We'll come back to that in a second, Willow, because yeah. that was a remarkable ball from Christie. But here come Chelsea. Colwell storming on down the left-hand side. For Chelsea, not the most naturally attacking fullback, uh, Cole, more of a centre half, out for a throw in. Well, that was an amazing ball from Christie. Oh, it was just in, what, inches away from being spot on. And Cliver, just two yards too far in advance of him. Sanchez, the goalkeeper, sweeper keeper, was out quickly to dispossess him. Into the final quarter of the game on BBC Radio Solon. Here's Conor Gallagher, just outside the left corner of the area. Sterling has switched over to the left-hand side since the introduction of Palmer, who's come on on the right, and he wins Chelsea a corner. Raheem Sterling on that far left side. Yeah, I was looking for an offside flag there. Didn't come. What do you think Kirkes thinks about Sterling swapping sides? Great. Let's see, because Sterling's on the ball again from that left-hand side. Back here to Gusto, just outside the penalty. He shoots. And in the end, it's well, well wide of the right-hand post from... Marlo Gusto. Well, put lots of effort in. Just having a look down on the bench. Here we go. There's another sub coming up. So Andoni Raula just calling Luis Sinistera towards him here. Sinistera. Keep practicing. I'll get your wife on to all week. Sinistera. <laughs> Back to Neto from the goal kick. The Cherry's playing this one out and Tabani will bring it out. So Sinistera, who wears shirt number 17. He's taking off his yellow bib and is about to make his Bournemouth debut. But Bournemouth at the moment on the defensive might have problems here. Four on four. Gallagher to the right-hand side. Uge, uh, Jackson, rather. And it runs through in the end. Zabani managed to get a shin in. Chelsea fans are furious there. They had four on four and didn't make absolutely anything of it. Bowled out quickly by Neto. Out to this near side to Philip Billing. Cliver in off the left-hand side. Nil-nil it remains. 21 minutes to play. BBC Radio Solon. We'll have all the reaction on BBC Sounds on air after the game for an amount of time that Jordan Clark will confirm to be in a moment. Both teams look a bit stretched at the moment. Solanke over on the right-hand side. We're on air till half past four this afternoon. So plenty of time. You know, the best part of 45 minutes or so post-match to hear from the Cherries camp as Chelsea try and steal a few yards down the far side with a throw-in. Referee Coop waves Colwell back. He moves back a token couple of yards and then David Coop still waving. So get back further. By the time he's taken a run up here, he'll end up taking it from the same place. So Sinistera readying himself, finally pulls on his number 17 Bournemouth shirt after a little bit of a delay. Sterling in the centre circle for Chelsea here. Behind Cole Palmer, who's Kirkes is quickly up to close down Palmer. Halfway, yeah, halfway inside the Chelsea half. Excellent. You know, you're playing against a winger. And you've just pushed them back to nearly in his own box. Good communication with Clivert as well there to say, just fill in that left back for me here. Uh, down goes Lewis Cook off the ball, and Chelsea have got it with Nicholas Jackson. Gallagher ahead of him, going through the middle. Tavernier working back, still runs loose for Gallagher, edge of the penalty area. Now Palmer, right of the D, just outside the box for Chelsea. Gusto on the outside into the last 20. Gusto, poor ball, straight at Kirkes, who managed to stick a foot out and divert it out towards the touchline. Down the line it goes to Gallagher, who's had an impressive game. He tried to knock it through the legs of Lloyd Kelly, but Kelly just fended him off. Comfortable defending. And back it goes to the Cherries centre half again, out to this left hand side and Billing. Kelly's been magnificent. He has had a good game. 
Not to talk him up too much because there's still 20 minutes where anything can happen, but he has had a good game. Him and Lewis Cook have had excellent games. Another change coming as well here for Cherries in a second. I think we're going to see Marcos Sinesi come on below. He's just been signalled back as well as Sinistera. The double change coming here. Some room for Tavernier over on this left-hand side for Bournemouth. Moving from right to left. Wider still oh. is Justin Clivert, who's still got it despite John Williams' shrieks. Clivert around the outside. There's a late challenge on Clivert by Gusto, which is going to be a free kick outside the left edge of the penalty area for Bournemouth here. A chance to send some big men forward. Yeah, get the big lads forward, definitely. They, they both nearly made a mess of that twice. They were thankful for the, for the foul. I think your reaction was over the top. And a big shriek. They had it all under control. <laughs> uh, free kick from Gusto, standing on the foot of Clivert. So Sinistera coming on and Sinesi coming on. I wonder if uh, Kelly's going to go to left back and Kirkes might come off or whether Sinesi goes to sit in the midfield in place of Lewis Cook. Lewis Cook would be a harsh one to take off or goes to help Lewis Cook, maybe. Billing off. Could, could go with three. Yeah, we'll see. Tactical decisions, but it is going to be a double sub for Iraola using this second window in a moment. But this free kick is a few yards outside the left edge of the penalty area. 18 to play. Lewis Cook with the right foot, Tavernier with the left foot, looking to deliver the key ball into the Chelsea penalty area here as we wait for the deadlock to be broken Missed at nil-nil. the first man. So Tavernier runs away from it. Lewis Cook drives it in towards the near post, could block away at the near post by Enzo Fernandez. Kirkes hooks it back in. Cherries are committed numbers forward here, so had to be a little bit careful. But they did have Aarons back on the halfway line to deal with it as it came forward. And some room here for... Tavernier, uh, sorry, Cliver over on that right-hand side to maybe try and get something moving forward. But Chelsea quickly back into shape. And now Aarons. Forward it comes towards Solanke. Rolls it around the corner. Cliver on that right-hand side now. Trying to get on to his stronger right foot. Couple of step-overs. There's men on the edge of the area for him if he needs them. Heading down a bit of a blind alley. Still comes in towards Solanke and Tavernier, who both missed it. Slightly behind Solanke. Tavernier tried to hook it goalwards. Good work from Cliver in the end. Excellent work by Cliver. He's tried an overhead kick, hasn't he, to connect? So here come the changes. Tavernier on his first start of the season. Yeah, makes sense. It's going to be replaced by Luis Sinistera, making his Cherries debut. And Milos Kerkes is coming off as well to be replaced by Marcos Sinesi. So not a huge surprise, that one. No. If I was, if I was Sterling, I'd, what's he going to do? He's going to play left back. I think Kelly's gone to left back. Looks like Kelly's gone to left back. Yeah, he has. And Senesi straight in. So interesting, Lloyd Kelly having had such a good game at the heart of the defence. I know, I'm not sure about moved that. Moved out of position. 17 minutes left. Kelly, you'd say, is a stronger left back than Senesi at left back if you are going to make the change. And they obviously feel like Kirk is on a booking as well. And maybe running out of a bit of steam. Here's Cole Palmer for Chelsea now. Moving forward, 30 yards from the Bournemouth goal. To the left it goes, and Raheem Sterling cutting off that right hand side, shooting for goal. Way off target from Raheem Sterling. And again, that final product from Chelsea's just got their supporters shrugging and looking at each other and going, it's not good enough. Yeah. I for Chelsea attacking-wise, Willow, since 49 minutes when they hit the, uh, the bar from the free kick, I haven't written any notable shots down for Chelsea. There was a scramble, wasn't there? But basically, I couldn't surmise that in a line, so I didn't write it down. Neto, out to this near side, the Cherries goalkeeper, Sinesi, clips one forward up over halfway, good use of the ball from the Argentinian, down the left flank it goes Sinistera involved for the first time, he rolls the ball away from uh, Gusto and wins a free kick for the challenge by Uga Chukwu well there's a cook on there oh, he's, Christy was screaming for the ball he decided to slow it down Sinesi with a throw, uh, the free kick down the left hand side, Sinistera getting towards the byline, can he keep that one in? Linesman was well behind play there Out. and eventually the linesman's Put the flag up. I mean, he was probably 10, 15 yards behind it on the far side. So, good sprint by the lines. Yeah, to catch up on that far touch line. Another Chelsea change coming in a moment, by the way. Um, Mauricio Pochettino just giving some final instructions to. In fact, there's going to be a couple of changes here by Chelsea. Uh, ben Chilwell is one of them. And the other one, just looking down to the touch line, is going to be uh, Ian Matson. Yeah, excellent. On line at Burnley. Good work on the far side there from Aarons. Yeah, Aarons and <laughs> Sterling. 15 minutes to play on BBC Radio Solent. Sunday afternoon on BBC Sounds as well. Forward comes Aarons towards the edge of the penalty. A little one-two. Clivert now driving into the D. Oh, it goes behind. It's a, a free kick given right on the edge of the box. And a card coming here as well. I thought it was going to be a penalty, but it's right on the edge of the penalty area. Cherries fans thought they'd got a penalty as well. It's a yellow card for the Chelsea defender as Clivert was at full tilt. Disassi is booked. We're going to get a replay here 
Of course, VAR would be checking this one, but it's definitely outside the box. And it's definitely a foul. And Clive, again, incisive running Willow into that yeah. Chelsea back line. Well, we just need someone to produce a bit of yeesh magic here. Well, it was a rash challenge by Dissassi when he had three teammates in front of him who could have stopped Clivert as well. But this is a hard one in terms of the set piece because you're not going to get it up and down no. from where it is. Well, you've go for power, look yeah. for a gap. A yard outside the box, just ever so slightly left of centre. Clivert having won the free kick, had a couple of good contributions so far, Justin Clivert. He is standing over it. Don't forget Aaron's run in that yeah. little melee. He's fantastic. It. Yeah. Phil Billing looks the more likely to try and hammer this at pace towards Robert Sanchez. The two Chelsea subs are still stood waiting to come on. Key moment here, 13 minutes remaining at the Vitality Stadium. Phil Billing, it's in very much almost Kiefer Moore territory, isn't it? TQ1 square. Marcus Sinesi is in Kiefer Moore position, just to the left of the wall. Referee Coot is still sorting out the cluster of players lined up about nine yards from the Chelsea goal because the Cherries have got a couple of contributors on the end of that wall but they can't get too close so the referee's trying to work out where the Chelsea wall ends to position those Bournemouth helpers in inverted commas Lloyd Kelly and Elia Zabani referee Coote still trying to sort it out he's got his hands out here as if to say why are you all pushing each other Kelly's got a Chelsea player with his arms round his middle referee Coote is going to have to walk back towards them here and sort this out a big delay before this free kick uh, surely we can come if we stand a, a yard forward well, they can't touch you well Lloyd Kelly's just saying why has he got his arms round my middle what's the penalty a, no it's not a penalty he's going to talk to the uh, Chelsea player who it is who's messing around there it's Nicholas Jackson who's the defense he's basically saying why are you putting your arms around Lloyd Kelly's middle in a well, well, in like a Heimlich maneuver so now he's got his hands by his side this free kick is a yard outside the penalty area, in the D, left of centre. Phil Billing has re-paced out his run-up here, left-footed. Cherry's fans are still concerned by that tangle on the edge of the wall, but Phil Billing can take them all out of the equation. As he comes up left-footed, it's straight into that wall, it goes behind in the end, off one of those helpers on the end of the wall, corner to Bournemouth. That was all very strange, wasn't it? It was all a bit of an anticlimax at the end, wasn't it? As it went behind off Conor Gallagher's heel. Well... So Ryan Christie goes across to take this corner. Still the Chelsea subs wait. And still it's nil-nil on BBC Radio Solon and BBC Sounds. But Bournemouth on the attack here. I think I've got this down as Bournemouth's first corner of the game. Christie has it over on that far side. Boscom back of the net. Shows the big screen just above Ryan Christie. As it goes deep towards the back post, Sanchez, the goalkeeper, has an easy claim. Immediately looks up the field and doesn't really see anything in a spearmint shirt on for him. As Cherries are trying to get themselves organised here. Down the right side it comes looking for Jackson, who gets away from Senesi. Would have been a foul, but Jackson back to his feet. Across comes Aarons to help out. Senesi will have another nibble here and puts Jackson on the floor the second time. We're and away. Now Chelsea are committed men forward. And now Solanke's away. Pochettino's going mad on the touchline. Solanke left corner of the penalty over Bournemouth. Billing round the outside. The ball's behind Billing. Still a chance. Billing sets it for the cross. Into Solanke. Onto his right foot. Sees a window. Saved by the legs of Sanchez as it came through a crowd from Dom Solanke's low effort, still a chance. Right-hand side, Ryan Christie, down the line to Clivert. That's spun up in the air off Thiago Silva, headed away by Fernandez. still Bournemouth in possession. Laying some siege on the Chelsea goal. Clivert has it onto his left foot, back onto his right edge of the penalty area. That was never going to be on. Hit some Chelsea players. Aaron's right of the box. Back to Clivert again, away from one challenge. Clivert's deep cross, Solanke's had a back across goal. And too far back across goal, and wide of the right-hand Wow. Post. Well, three or four efforts there. Couldn't quite put it into the net. Dominic just at the end, heading it back across goal. Couldn't direct it down. Here come the changes for Chelsea. On comes Chilwell. Uh, and also coming on is Matson. Jackson's just been booked. To replace Colwell. Uh, who's been booked? Jackson? Yeah. OK. So Matson is coming on. Colwell has gone off. And the other change is Chilwell on and Enzo Fernandez off. So that's how good a job Lewis Cook's done yes. on Enzo Fernandez. He's going off. Absolutely. <coughs> Not happy, Enzo Fernandez. Not exactly rushing. I think the Chelsea fans are telling saying, hang on a minute, we're nil nil away to Bournemouth, ten minutes to go, and you're walking off. As if you've just been told your football career's over. Chelsea hanging on for a point at Bournemouth below. 
Well, I think he's misreading the situation. The Chelsea fans just shouting to him, get off. Waving their arms, saying, get off. Uh, there's, a problem here the, now. there's a problem here on the bench for one of the Chelsea coaching staff. Showing a yellow card. He had to go to the linesman, did he? Encroachment, I think he was on the field. It was all about the... Uh, it was all about the challenge from uh, Senesi on Jackson in the uh, the early part of that build-up, which ultimately led to Bournemouth having a chance. By the way, having seen a replay of that Solanke shot, Willow, it was almost identical to his goal at Brentford, where he cut in, it went through the legs of the defender. Unfortunately, this time, Sanchez with his trailing leg saved it, whereas the Brentford keeper last weekend, Flecken, didn't manage to do that two weeks ago. Nil-nil, nine minutes to go here at the Vitality Stadium. They were offside against Sterling. The flag never came, so it's a Chelsea corner on the left-hand side. Well, getting tense time. Worked so hard to keep clean sheet. We'll see it right through to the end. Terry's trying to get themselves organised here. There's a lot of pointing and a lot of waving going on. Bearing in mind they've made some personnel changes. Sinistera looks like uh, there's a bit of a lost sheep at the moment, trying to work out who to mark in the penalty area. Here comes the corner from Chilwell. From the left-hand side, there are players on the floor in the box. Cleared away by the Cherry, Sinistera trying to pinch it away from Gallagher. Worked back out to Chilwell on the left-hand side. Chilwell closed down quickly by Aarons, who's another one who's had a good game, actually. Willow, Max Aarons. Listen, you can go through. There's not many who you would think haven't done well. Got to last the 90, though, or the 95. Like they couldn't last weekend away at Brentford to hang on to what they've got at the moment. It's the crossing towards Nicholas Jackson, who I'm not sure he was expecting it, actually. Rather surprised him, and it ended up being a tame header, which was easily saved by Neto to his left. Yeah, I think you've got to flick off someone first. Yeah, with people jumping in front of him. Billing carries it up to halfway, looks for a long diagonal. Cliver trying to sneak in behind, and Phil Billing, he, he were right down underneath us. He thought it was close to being the perfect ball, and it was. Oh, Just too yeah, strong. We've had three or four of them, and we were people trying to pick out long runs. Great to watch. I can see that's something they've worked on a lot, Willow. That, yeah, that range sure. passing, isn't it? Trying to get it exactly right. I'm sure they do that a lot on the training ground. The long diagonal balls, quickly over the top of the defenders where they see the opportunities. Cherries pressing at the moment inside the Chelsea penalty area. Three of them there were surrounding the uh, Chelsea players. And again, the Cherries supporters behind the goal are waving Bournemouth on to say, come on, don't just stand there. Well, it's all carefully planned and orchestrated as to when they go. Aaron's has done it again. Yeah. He's going in front of Sterling. Fantastic work. Now the play on that far side for a throw into Chelsea. Bournemouth's last Premier League win here was on the 30th of... or last Premier League win was on the 30th of April against Leeds by four goals to one as Lewis Cook gives away a free kick on the far side. Challenge on Chilwell. Two wins in 16 in the Premier League for Chelsea, which is a remarkable record when you think about it. One of those was against Bournemouth back in May. The other one was at home to Luton. But since March, Chelsea have got the fewest points of any non-promoted or relegated team in the Premier League. So it goes out of play on this near side. Nil nil it remains at the moment. There are six minutes to play, plus whatever's added on. There has been a bit of messing around in the second half, so we'll probably have the four or five minutes added. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's my ten-minutely cough as well. As the ball goes back towards Sanchez again, who's had a good game in the Chelsea goal while well, he's been called upon. A couple of important saves and interventions. There's a ball over the top from Chelsea looking for Sterling, but he doesn't bother challenging with the powerhouse figure of Ilya Zabani there for that one. Jackson helps it on, and now Cole Palmer driving forward for Chelsea here towards the edge of the area, knocks it to the right, Sterling will keep it in, it wasn't a great ball, Cole Palmer back, good reflex save by Neto, not cleared, Matson's FA is blocked by Sinesi, superbly, Chelsea claiming handball, they'll be looking at it in the background, still a not clear, Matson plays it back into the box, Cook's there again, Cherry's got a man down, Christie's wriggled away from a couple of challenges, brilliant from Ryan Christie, up over halfway, Cliver in space, Solanke at the back post, Sinistero arriving as well towards the back post his Solanke can't get it under control still manages to keep it in no he doesn't it's behind for a goal kick brilliant ball with counter-attack and Solanke couldn't get it Diving into his header. control Diving header I think just throw yourself at it here's the other end of the well, pitch the Cherries first. are lucky at the other end it's a great reflex save by Neto great block by Senesi with his midriff it looked like but if Cole Palmer's ball to Sterling hadn't been over hit there might have been a bigger problem there when he knocked it to the right, he drove Sterling wide of the goal. Sterling, so yes, he definitely had his hands up as he uh, blocked that shot, but players are restarted, so no problem with it. Last five minutes, nil-nil, Cherry's there. 
having an opportunity with a bit more quality in that final third they're looking for. Kelly across to meet Gusto here. And he, well, he cut the heels of Gusto. Goal kicks the decision. Gusto's down, he's off the field, so he'll need to roll back on if he wants to delay the game any further. It's a goal kick to Bournemouth. Yeah, Kelly again, even in the left-back spot. Absolutely superb yeah, yeah, yeah. today. They're just holding, uh, they're just holding the game up here. The goal kick. Just seeing that challenge by Kelly on uh, Kelly on Gusto. Uh, it can only be uh, judged by VAR if it's inside the penalty area, and it was very close to the line. Uh, there was some contact, but I don't think you would say there's enough contact there for that to be an obvious nah, mistake. Definitely. So not. play, I think, is going to restart. Nil nil. We're about to see David Brooks as well, who's stripped and ready for action off the bench below. Four minutes left. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the main thing is for me now, just see it through. OK, if you want to have a go, don't mind that from set plays, but don't get beat from this spot. You're not a fan of the win it no. or lose it trying to win it no. mentality. Solanke challenging there with Uga Chukwu as the ball came forward. Senesi powers ahead of four, but actually didn't get a, quite as clean a connection Think. as he wanted. Sinistera rescues it well. Gallagher then clatters into Billing just over the halfway line. Free kick to Bournemouth. Just over halfway. Here comes David Brooks in good goal scoring form. One for Bournemouth at Brentford and one for Wales in the international break. Brooks will have to wait because the shows have taken the restart. Senesi oh closed down by Jackson. Manages to knock it back to his keeper. Just two things quicker. Oh, no. Oh, what's Neto doing? Goodness me, he's played it to Lewis Cook, who's under real pressure in midfield. Oh, he's certainly not going to give you a heart attack to these boys. It's two in a row there, giving Will Willow uh, a cold sweat. Now Billing with some room down the left-hand side. Luka Chuk will in pursuit. Solanke in the box for Billing to get his head up and look for. Billing to the byline. Across the six-yard box goes past everybody. Aarons will pick it up for Bournemouth. Right corner of the box. Straight back it comes in towards Solanke with a header, blocked by the defender. Handball shouts tentatively from behind the goal. Nothing doing from the officials there. And again, some space for Bournemouth to try and exploit. And it's Lloyd Kelly, who's trying to do defence into the attack down the left-hand side. Brilliant from Kelly. Excellent work. That might get him your man of the match award, Willow. Easy. He's drawn some praise from the Bournemouth supporters. Zabani turns away from Matson, who was closing him down quickly. Christie, halfway inside the Chelsea half, spins away from... Disassi out to the left hand side it comes. Kelly. Now Christie again, 30 yards out for Bournemouth. To the left hand side it goes. Sinistera, first chance one and one against his fullback. Sinistera onto his stronger right foot, runs into traffic, gives away a free kick inside the Chelsea box. Dear me. Here comes Brooks on for Christie. Well, he's done well as well, Christie. Another standing ovation for Ryan Christie, Willow. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can't think of anyone who hasn't had a, a good game here today. It's been a real team effort, but it's not over yet. Well, Christie is uh, one who's turned into a real popular figure here, isn't yes, he? Yes, definitely. He's the kind of player under uh, the Iraola regime that he's he needs. Won, he's won him over. Yep. It wasn't like that to start with. Agreed. So they chant the name of David Brooks, who's gone and slotted into the number 10 role for this final minute and a bit, plus added time to play. Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil, here on BBC Radio Solent. All the reaction to come. We're on air through till 4.30, wherever you're listening to us right now. You don't need to twiddle your dial or change your online stream. We're with you right here till 4.30. Reaction from the Cherries players and management. Lewis Cook over the halfway line. Again, Chelsea's claims for a free kick were waved away. Lewis Cook was caught in possession, but has won it back. Down the right-hand side, Clivert again, who's been lively for the Cherries since coming off the bench. Clivert on, the right, on his right foot into Brooks, full of confidence, 20 yards out, thought about a shot. Mike Still on his right foot, pokes it through to Solanke, left-footed shot blocked by Disassi. Lloyd Kelly retrieves it. Clivert, right side of the penalty area. His cross doesn't beat the first man, Chilwell, out for a throw. Well... Putting the pressure on right at the end. Just waiting to see how many minutes extra. That's coming in 20 seconds from now, but Bournemouth having some late pressure here against Chelsea. Looking for that first Premier League win of the season, looking to extend Maurizio Pochettino's problematic start to life at Chelsea. Ball out on this near left-hand side with the Cherries. It's with Sinistera. Here comes the fourth official's board. Sinistera down the line to Kelly. Eight minutes added on at the end of the game as that ball comes in towards the box. It's spinning around and Sanchez picks it up as it bounces above Solanke. Eight minutes remaining. We're into that eight minutes now. Chelsea charging forward from left to right in the Dorset sunshine now. 
a far cry from the conditions we started the game in. Raheem Sterling trying to take on Aarons. It goes into the feet of Matson. Left to the D, top of the box for Chelsea. Jackson sets it back. Conor Gallagher to the right hand side it goes and Gusto. Lloyd Kelly comes out to meet him. Cross to the back post over everybody. And Sterling will have to go and fetch it from the touchline. Off and the flag flags, is up enough. eventually against Sterling. Bournemouth have a free kick inside their own penalty area. Well, it's a nice little bit of pressure. Who are you going for, Willow? Kelly. Neto. No. If he, if the saves he's made, he would have been disappointed if he hadn't have made them. I think you're right. He's made three saves, oh, yeah. I can remember. One low down, one reflex hand up and a little flap away yeah. when he's lying on the ground. Great saves, don't yeah, get me saves. wrong. Yeah. Important saves. I think Lloyd Kelly can probably feel slightly hard done by there. <laughs> well, anyway, sponsors pay, sponsors pay their money, literally, take the choice. That ball from Neto, having freshly been named man of the match, misses everybody, goes all the way through to Robert Sanchez on the other end of the field. What a lovely day, Willow. Said nobody as they were approaching the yeah, ground earlier. It will be in seven minutes. Oh, lovely day. My cagoule that I'm sat here wearing is uh, <laughs> getting a bit toasty all of a sudden now. Chelsea roll it out from the goalkeeper. Again, playing fast, one-touch football. Thiago Silva is <laughs> looking back scornfully towards his goalkeeper, Sanchez, for putting him in a bit of a tight spot. Now Ugo Chukwu, the 19-year-old, former Ren man, over the halfway line, out to the left. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Ugo Chukwu, simple ball to Chilwell, 10 yards away, missed him out for a throw. Well, tiredness <laughs> setting in. Lack of concentration, call it what you want. It's been 10 years since Bournemouth didn't win in their first three home games of a season. Back in League One in the 2012 season, 12-13 season. There's the ball down the left hand, uh, right hand side looking for Solanke in a race with Thiago Silva, but the Brazilian had a head start there and it goes back to Sanchez, who again... Dom Dominic still closing down. Loses every last second available Sanchez as Solanke selflessly wins every... Uh, chases every blade of grass. Sinistera couldn't get it under control and has lost it back to Chelsea just over the halfway line. Nil-nil, we've played two and a half minutes of the eight that were added on by referee David Coote. Chelsea have it in the centre circle, driven long by Leslie Ugochukwu out to this near side the right where it's picked up by Gusto, just by the corner flag. Near side the right, Chelsea attacking left to right. Cole Palmer, former City man along the top of the box, Billing trying to divert him away from goal, which he's managed to do at the moment successfully. Cole Palmer back to Ugochukwu, 35 yards out. Gusto trying to slide in behind Cliver here, he's got to stay alert. And Gusto managed to keep the ball in, but has uh, only found Neto. Gusto's off the field hurt again, and the Cherries trying to exploit that vacancy at right back. Sinistera forward to Brooks over the halfway line. There's room on the right for Lewis Cook. Brooks is on the left as well. The challenge coming back towards Solanke. Here's Brooks, left corner of the penalty area. Lewis Cook at the back post didn't quite reach him from Brooks. Nice idea. Lewis Cook again, an unlikely man joining the attack. Yeah, he was on the stretch, wasn't he, Brooksy? Zaban is strong against Jackson and a handball there by Jackson, who also managed to knock Aaron's over as well. Take your pick of the fouls in, in operation there. And Bournemouth get a free kick over halfway. He's done well, the little fella, Aaron's. <laughs> He's created a lot of fuss down that right hand side. Lewis Cook is uh, hands over at the moment, on his uh, hands on his knees, just taking some breath in. As a result of that long run, he just made to support the attack a moment ago. Aarons is back on his feet. Free kick Bournemouth. There are four minutes of the eight added on to play. Nil-nil, stay with us for the reaction. Is it going to be a third draw of the season for the Cherries? Or can there be some late drama? Yeah, and this, this one would be a sweet draw. Lewis Cook, deep towards the back post. Too high for Sinesi, and Sinistera hadn't really got involved, and it's all the way through. And Tommy Elphick, I don't know what Tommy's role is in set plays these days, but just turns around and sits back on the bench and goes, why do I bother? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure Kelly, he's been absolutely outstanding. Both ends of the pitch, in fact. Zoe Rundle from the press team, very helpfully, just asking uh, as she goes down the stairs who our preference would be to speak to after the game. I was expecting a no when I just said that I might like to speak to Lloyd Kelly. Yellow card coming for Chilwell here as he pulls the shirt of Cliver, short of the halfway line. Old hand Chilwell knows all the tricks. It's actually why he got left out today, isn't it, by Chelsea? They, I'm they, glad he did. They left him out and played Colwell, who's much more of a defensive left-sided midfielder, instead of Chilwell's been playing a bit further forward, almost wide left for 
Chelsea this season. Long ball by Zabani, diagonal looking for the run of Sinistera down the left-hand side, but headed away by Gusto. And now Palmer cannons it out of play off the Cherries man. And it'll be a throw-in deep inside the Chelsea half. Two and a half minutes of the eight to play on BBC Radio Solo and BBC Sounds. Lewis Cook wins another header, this time above Matson in the heart of the Chelsea midfield. Now a little ball, nice one from Conor Gallagher there, just took two Cherries players out of the game, and now Cole Palmer helps it along to the far side of the left, and Chilwell, Sterling hugging that touchline in the sunshine in front of those 1,400 Chelsea supporters, a large number of whom are clad in some form of royal blue upper half clothing. Out towards this near right side, it comes again, and Gusto down the line for Gallagher. Billing comes across to shadow him, five yards from the byline. Gallagher brings it to a standstill, rolls it into the feet of Gusto. Sinistera trying to close him down, but Disassi has to go back towards Thiago in the centre circle. Patient approach from Chelsea, maybe too patient for their supporters' liking. Nil-nil away at Bournemouth. As here comes Disassi forward down the right-hand side again. He's a mountainous figure, and he's gone on down the right-hand side now to whip a cross in. Low ball into the near post, cut out by Kelly. Behind for a corner to Chelsea, 90 seconds remaining. Well, <laughs> I imagine this could be the last action of the match. The way the uh, game turns quickly from one end to the other at the minute, well, we might get four more passages of play in yet in this next 90 seconds, the way it's been uh, yeah, swinging some, from end to end. Heavy legs out there now. <laughs> Chilwell takes it short, comes to Sterling. Cherry's got to switch on here. Chilwell wants the return ball and gets it. It's on his weaker right foot, but he still stands one up. Matson was coming in. Lewis Cook did just enough to put him off. Cherry's players at the moment, no one's closing the ball down, which is why the crowd are chanting. In it comes towards the penalty spot. Sanessi with the header away. And Ron Clivert has got fresh legs. Pace ahead of him. Chilwell tracking back equally fresh legs. Brooks down the middle is unattended for the moment, it'll go past him, and here's Lewis Cook again, charging down the right-hand side. If he looks up, he's got Brooks deep, Brooks is coming in at the back post, too close to the goalkeeper, Sanchez. Wow, what a passage you play that was. Still got to concentrate, get back now. I told you we'd get four passages of play, Will, and there's yeah. two of them. As we got, uh, we got 40 seconds left. Nil-nil the score on BBC Radio Solo and BBC Sounds. Matson, there are some heavy legs out there, Willow. Now, both teams look completely out of shape. It's just a cluster of bodies now. Yeah. People just standing around, trying to get into position, digging deep physically. After running out of legs last week, Bournemouth have stuck to their task gamefully here against Chelsea and could be in for a big point. 15 more seconds, Chelsea in possession. Ugachukwu. Now Disassi to come forward once again. Is there time for Chelsea to make anything happen here? Cole Palmer. Driving away from goal, no more time, it is an honours even stalemate here which is received in completely different ways by the two sets of supporters. Chelsea saying, oh no, not again, while Bournemouth supporters can see as their players hit the turf almost to a man here. They've given absolutely everything, they've given Chelsea one or two moments with their billion pound squad nearly, one or two moments to concern them. But it's a third draw of the season for Andoni Iraola, who keeps building, getting more and more players available. Chelsea hit the woodwork, Bournemouth had some good chances as well, most notably through Watara, Solanke and Lewis Cook. But all in all, John Williams, how do you feel about a nil-nil draw? Listen, I think that's the best performance of the, of the season so far. Collectively, you, to a man, I don't think you, everybody who's a 7, 8 or 9 out of 10, collectively all over the pitch, defended well, goalkeeper making saves, and the other end of the pitch, there was lots of opportunities and chances that... Maybe on another day, we would have we would have put away. But I, I think it's a real good performance, in a, and it's you know against a, a, a billion pound Chelsea side. You know, that, what, what do you expect? Are we going to expect the way that Irola wants them to play? That obviously we've we've been so used to Bournemouth being under the cosh against teams. When Bournemouth have sat low, sat deep, teams come at them, come at them. You need a bit of luck to last the 90. It's a different kind of game now. There's still that pressure, but obviously Bournemouth seem to have more of an outlet well, at the other end to take the pressure off. We have an awful lot more. Going, new, going the other way, going up the pitch. Every time we get the ball in wide positions, not just the wingers, the two full-backs as well, they get forward and it's, it's, it's really good to watch and I'm sure there's porters have loved that today as well, apart from it not winning. Willow on air with Jordan for the next half an hour or so here on BBC Radio Solon. Through till 4.30, your reaction at Solon Sport on Twitter. You can WhatsApp us as well, start your message with the word Solon, stick your name on as well, 08000 321 treble 3. 
But often you see the home supporters staying largely in their almost totality and applauding their team off after a nil-nil draw at home. But their team have given absolutely everything in what transpired to be Sunday afternoon sunshine here at the Vitality Stadium. An entertaining draw. Bournemouth nil, Chelsea nil. This is BBC Radio Solent Sport.